Where I would have been playing online. Now, I'm doing Dragonov. And Dragonov, I have been playing him a lot in this game. He used to be my secondary in Tag 2 and Tekken 6 with Marta, who's my, my, my main. Excuse me. I really need this shit right now, man. This Popeyes is fucking killing me. If I catch a heart attack midstream, I apologize that time. So anyway, Dragonov is very straightforward. The thing about Dragonov, though, is uh, much like Aris has been saying lately, is um, as straightforward as his game plan is, his execution, ooh, that was ugly. His execution is definitely above average difficulty, especially in regards to using him at his. Oh, sorry, my phone. Especially in regards to using him at a very effective level. Sure, you could do this all day, you know, and then this all day. Like these are easy to execute, good moves, right? These are very easy to execute, good moves, right? But at the end of the day, you need to convert. What the fuck was that? Don't think hit my air conditioner. I think from the outside. This is like a weird noise. At the end of the day, you need to be able to uh, threaten with raw running two at multiple ranges. It doesn't have to be instant up first, but eventually you want to work your way up to instant raw running two, right? You got to be able to threaten with raw running two at multiple ranges. You got to be able to convert with the forward three cancels and shit like that at will. And you know, you kind of those those things could like, and also uh, while standing four pickups, right? To make moves like this really good, like really good. You have to like do an instant while standing four pickup, which is like, ugh. but fortunately, the game like an easy pickup now, but like it's less consistent in some distances. And see, like but it's less consistent in some distances. You have to do weaker combos. You get a much better combo with the while standing four pickup. So those are like those are not super hard things, but they're definitely like the kinds of things that no matter how good you are, there's a chance you'll drop that kind of shit mid match, while you won't drop shit from other simple to use characters like let's say Kazumi. Right? Other simple to use but really good characters, like a Kazumi, who's like as straightforward as it fucking gets in this game. So, like, that's the, you know, the short of Dragonov. Uh, no problem, uh, Pressure God. Glad I could help. Um, so, that's the short of Dragonov, right? As, as I think he is in this game. And, uh, you know, I think he's just basically a strong poke based character with uh, a lot of freaking juggle damage and really, like, some of the best pressure tools in the game, right? The down two is pretty much a pressure tool when you think about it. And it's pretty much also the best low poke, arguably. This is the best low poke in the game, and Dragonov has that. You've heard about it a billion times. I'll go into the more specifics when it gets to the move. But let's just say it's a high crush that you cannot sidestep, and it's only negative 13 on block, and it's even on hit. <laughs> and it does significant damage. Usually, like, a, 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 poke, a low poke with, that has all those properties doesn't do 17 damage. That's above average. Um... One weakness I do believe Dragonov has is I think his range could bite him in the ass sometimes. Like, this down forward two's range, it could be a pretty inconsistent punish at times. And I know that it looks like it has a ton of range from here, but you gotta understand, I'm clipping the other Dragonov's arm fairly often when I swing from this range. Like, you'll notice that a lot of moves are put back. For example, this shoulder, uh, you'll have trouble, even though it's negative 15, you'll have trouble punishing that. And even the same thing with his other 15 frame punisher back four three. It's a little weird. But uh, I do think that is like a thing that he runs into with some specific matchups. But that's not like a huge weakness either. Um, one of the weakness I think is when people start to duck this. If you run into that, there's not that many people that even at a high level that duck this consistently. But if you do run into somebody that starts to duck this, then all of a sudden you got to take some risks to really put some damage in, because uh, shit like this, you know, like this, this for this is a great poke and all, but by itself it's not gonna get it done. And down forward one floor is not a natural combo on normal hit. So basically, he's really good at chipping people away. But the thing that makes him like, if you make this risky to do, then he has to take some pretty big risks to really open you up for like damage, in my opinion. Uh, but you could totally chip at, away at people until they die too. J we see JDCR do it all the fucking time. So he's good enough to, that that sort of weakness doesn't really hurt him that much. Right? So anyway, starting from the top, like always. You know what? Let me not do this. I'm gonna open up a uh, RB Norway window here and follow that. Even though I have the Tekken bot up, it's just I'm used to it, so it makes it easy for me. I'm still gonna use the Tekken bot's frame data, but as far as going through a move list, RB Norway will will show moves that don't. I don't think Dragon really has any hidden moves, but they tend to show moves that show moves that don't show up here. 
the regular in-game move list. So I like to have it up on the side. Eight seconds, seven, dragon <clears throat> all. Alright, here we go. Awesome. Alright. Starting from the top with the jab. And of course, Dragonov has a jab like anybody else. Plus one on block, plus eight on hit, ten frames, seven damage for him. So nothing special about that. Then he has this one one extension. Now this 1-1 one, one extension is a weak jab punt, as if you wanted to use it as a jab punish, it is weak, but as far as frame advantage, it's actually really high at plus 7, because his other jab punish is 2-1, which is 3 more damage, but it's only plus 6, I think they buffed this, I think it's going to be plus 5, so you can, you can sacrifice a little bit of damage for a little bit more advantage, and you'd be surprised at the difference, depending on how your opponent is moving and what move you want to follow up with. You'd be surprised at how much of a difference uh, plus seven will make versus plus six. I'll get into that when I talk about this move. Um, and then he has one, one, three, right? So one, one is negative four on block. One, one, three is negative nine on block. It's safe, but you can sidestep it. Also, I'm gonna, I never checked this, but I wanna see if you could duck the second at one, one, or if it jails. Even if he doesn't delay it, it is pretty delayable, but. Okay, yeah, first of all, 1-1 one, one does in jail. Second of all, you can sidestep that. I forget which direction. Let's see, I think it's right. Hold on, let me get rid of this. Uh, remove this way. Okay. Oh, maybe you can't. Maybe it's only sidestep if they delay it. Ah, uh, uh, interesting. I see people sidestep this, and I thought it was just sidesteppable. I'm thinking it's because everyone delays this string. So it's not sidesteppable. Look at that, we're already learning. But we do know that 1-1 one, one does not jail. So uh, you might not want to go out with a while standing 15 frame launcher. You might want to go with something faster to interrupt the last hit. Just in, just in case, in the heat of a match, you might not get the full on 15 frame punish. Uh, even though you could do it in training mode. Depends on your reactions, I suppose. But either way it goes, uh, you could duck the second hit. And uh, if he delays the third hit, which is a common thing with this string. You can sidestep it right and left. This might be matchup dependent with your character. You, want, you know, depending on your character, you might only be able to sidestep it to one side. But you could definitely sidestep this if you delayed it. I thought you could sidestep it if he didn't, obviously, but whatever. Proven wrong already. If you get hit, obviously you won't be sidestepping shit. But it does not combo, nor does it combo on counter hit. It's not a counter hit string. So this is a good string. This is just one of those things where you do this, and then the last hit stops people from swinging at you too much. And even then, negative four isn't that bad, so you're only, you know, you could easily make people hesitate enough to sacrifice a plus four frame advantage, so. Negative four on block isn't bad, so this is a good, this is a pretty good string already. So that's one, one, three. Next, um, I'm assuming the second hit counter hit will make the third hit combo. It's a common thing here, yeah. And you cannot de you cannot delay the second hit. You can only delay the third hit. Yeah, you can delay it quite a bit. Anyway, next is his one two. Now this can be also be a jab punish, but as you can see, it's only 15 damage and it's only plus two. Do not use one two as a jab punish. Do not use one two as a jab punish. Do not use one two as a jab punish. So the things about one two is it is high mid. So depending on the situation, you might catch people with the second hit. Uh, one thing I never checked about this. So he has one two one as a jab string. Guard off. Okay, I was curious. The second encounter here will make it work, right? Obviously. The real reason is this is uh, this one two one commonly known. This is a counter hit jab string, and this is a key part of his poking because he has kind of like the Lee Shaolan style of poking, with the high crushing low. And then a 13 frame mid, and then a counter hit uh, 10 frame. So Dragonov has the pa pa pa, right? So when you think about uh, jab with down forward one and down uh, down two, let's just say you know let's just go with that as basic, really 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 super basic poke game. Down two for low, down forward one for mid, and then jabs. Uh, when you think about the fact that let's say down forward one is only negative two on block. 
Uh, if you were to go for a down forward one into a down two, and they think, oh shit, I'm gonna go for a mid poke for some reason, or jab into a down two, or even better, just, just let's say you're gonna go for a jab into down forward one. When you go to jab to down forward one, down forward one is 13 frames. Uh, they're only gonna be able to interrupt you with a uh, jab to down forward one with an 11 or 10 frame move. That's gonna be a high, which opens up jab into down one, right? So. If they think, oh, he's gonna go jab into down into down uh, down two. I said down one, sorry. Uh, if he goes to jab into down two, if they think, oh shit, let me throw out like some sort of mid here, mid option. Well, that opens up counter hit one two one. Or even if they were to go for a, like a, a hop kick, it would open up one two one two one, which will float them. Another good example is if he did down forward one into down forward one. If they were to go for a quick mid, that opens up counter hit one two one. That's still really risky, obviously, because down forward one to down forward one is. Uh, down for one on block is negative two, which means 15 frames, which means you'll exchange for 15 frame moves. I'm moving kind of fast here because I'm on monster energy right now, so pardon me. But um, it's still like there's a lot of ways to open up during this basic poke game, much like the case with Lee Chalon. There's a lot of ways to open this up as a as a 10 frame counter hit string. Is it counter hit confirmable? Sort of. Uh, you could do one of those things where by the time you hit the the two. If you're watching for it, you might be able to see that, oh, I landed a counter hit, and then you'll do it. But there is no visual confirmation. The hit spark looks the same, whether it's counter hit or not. You have to be paying attention to your opponent to be able to verify the counter hit and then finish it. If you do finish it, and they block it, and it's not counter hit, it is negative 14. Some characters can launch that. Which arcade stick do I use? I use a Itoki Omni over here. Uh, it's already fucked up on me, like three different times and I had to replace the parts every time and haven't even had this shit for a year yet. I wouldn't recommend it. So anyway, 1-2-1 uh, one, one is very risky depending on your opponent's knowledge of the matchup because some characters could launch 14 frames and even when they cannot launch 14 frames, they could do a lot of damage with 14 frames. Like let's say Shaheen with his forward back two, forward back one, he has some sort of hit throw that does like 50 damage. Some characters could make you hurt even if they can't launch into 14 frames. So yeah, that's the whole deal with one two one. Don't use one two too much. One two is also negative nine on block. Gross. So yeah, that's another good reason not to use it too much. The last hit of one two one, I believe, has counter hit properties. It do, and then you can juggle off of it into whatever. But down two while standing for pickup. So it has that also. But you don't see, like, when you see Dragon Ball, you don't see that landed very often in, when you watch anyone, no matter what level, play this character. So that's worth knowing, but I wouldn't bank on, like, using it to bait out people to, you know, put myself at negative nine constantly, and then all of a sudden, I'm going to do this, because it's not, like, he can't even delay it. He can't even delay it to fish for that. You have to just commit to the string to fish for that. So, I mean, it's just a nice little bonus, a cherry on top of the string, I guess. But it's not really a big deal. So anyway, next we got 1-3. Now, I've been seeing Aris use this a lot lately, and I've been wondering why. I'm, this is one of the moves I'm, I was looking forward to looking into. So one thing I can say up front is it's 21 damage. So this is his highest damage 10 frame punish. Excuse me. It's only plus 1 on hit, though. And on block, it is negative 7. So the thing about this is he has two extensions. Well, technically three if you count the cancel. Or four if you count the cancel of the cancel. Uh, he has 131, which is the start of one of his uh, uh, 10 frame. It's labeled as a 10 frame, uh, sorry, 10 hit. It's labeled as a 10 hit combo in his move list, but it's really more like seven hits. Yeah, it's like seven hits, six or seven hits or something. Uh, this move was nerfed since Tech and Tag 1. This move got, uh, sorry, Tech and Tag 2. This move got buffed in Tag 2. 1, 2, 1. It was plus 1. Now it's negative 3, which is weird. And it's high. It is duckable. So, the first two hits Jail, which I didn't know, but the third hit does not, obviously. I did not know the 1 3 jail, so 1 3 is actually pretty good because even though it's negative 7, he has two extensions that he could play with. Now, the thing about the 1 2 1 is I don't know what he gets. He doesn't get anything on counter here, does he? Uh, no. And yeah, definitely doesn't combo on counter here. Yeah, no, no. 
It doesn't, you can't delay it either. Uh, but on hit, it is plus eight on hit, which is good frame match. It does push out a tiny bit, but he's still pretty damn close. So this is one of those where you could uh, turn a... Let me show you guys something right now real quick. This is going to be a good thing, uh, a good way to show off what heavy plus frames gives you. Because Dragunov's the kind of character that gets heavy plus frames very often. Um, let's record this into this. Now check this out. Right? Did they give that shit some tracking? Or, I'm, or is my sidestep just really bad? I think my side step is bad. Wow, that tracks to that first kick. That first kick did not use the track at all. Now it tracks a little bit to his uh, to his right side. The second kick always tracked though. Yeah, yeah it has some. That that got buffed. I didn't know that. Well, let's do this. Alright, so, it definitely does not track in this direction, as you can see. I'm putting him at plus one. But if I do this... Right, now, if I were to put myself at negative eight by getting hit by that last punch... You ain't sidestepping that shit at all. And that's the case with any remotely fast... As a matter of fact, I have a better example. 12 frame mid, right? See? Lanier is AF, right? Can't sidestep at all. In the case you're wondering, is like, is it my execution? He's trying. See? Can I try to make it go the other way. By the way, the same thing happens with his 12 frame Punisher. See? Same thing. He's gonna try to do it, see? Nope. Too much frame advantage. As long as the move is remotely fast. Another example. See? He tried. And that moves a little slower. See? <sighs> so, that's one of the good things about that 1 2 1. Let's see if any of this combos up. Ooh, ugly. Okay, so that combo. Ah, uh, and that's where it ends. Oh, it combos uh, natural. I did not know that. Negative five on hit. All right. That is negative 16 on block, though. Negative five on hit, negative 16 on block. The one two one shit isn't not as good as it used to be. I don't know if I would risk it. I've been seeing Aris use it a lot, and I don't know. Well, anyway, the other extension is uh, uh, one three two. Did I say one two one? I meant one three one. Uh, one three two is the mid extension for people that duck the one. Obviously, it is also his old bound move. It does it still calls the spike. Some people JDCR sometimes you might notice that he still uses this as a wall combo sometimes to like do a hard knockdown depending on the situation. You know, maybe he's going for a specific setup, I don't know. But it does do that spike where the opponent has to hold back to avoid uh, extra damage like the stomp. So, that's one thing about it. Another thing about it is uh, it causes that sort of knockdown on normal hit. But on counter hit, assuming they didn't nerf it, it does that. And that's that kind of knockdown. Sometimes you could hold back to recover. Sometimes you cannot. In tag 2 and maybe 6, you cannot. Let's see about now. See, back quick roll will show you. Nope, oh, so guaranteed follow-up. Oop. That's a hit. Counter hit by itself. Oh, I'm trying to ist his shoulder. 46 damage. Uh, which is not a bad risk to take. For only... What is it? Negative 12. Negative 12 with a little bit of pushback. But, I mean, eh, they'll punish this. He's not that far back. It is negative 12, though, so that's not you know, not a bad risk to take, in my opinion. Can they sidestep it? I don't think so. Let me see. <clears throat> I 
Why is he ducking? So, unlike the back 4 3, it does not um, real uh, The last hit, the, the second or, or the third hit, does not track. Wow, the jab is tracking. Did I record this in a weird way? Why is this jab tracking? I might have delayed the year recording a bit. Yeah, weird. So if you happen to sidestep it, you gotta interrupt him before that last hit connects. Oh, I think my sidesteps were just bad. Well, that spin is still pretty good. Um, that last punch does also wall splat, obviously. In case you were wondering, that will hard wall splat, I believe. All right, so that's that. Uh, next is the cancel. So this is kind of gimmick, even though I get grabbed by it all the time because I'm like always too slow to react. This is just a high, uh, a, a high throw where you can cancel out of the mid punch. And it is breakable with one plus two. It's also obviously duckable. You do one, three, two, one plus two, right after the two to input this. See, look at that. I started my armor move and I still broke it. I wonder if they changed that mechanic. You're not supposed to be able to, if you get grabbed out of your armor, you're not supposed to be able to break throws. Also, there's like a huge gap here. You can almost react to the cancel. Uh, almost, almost. You could definitely react with a duck. If you're not too slow, you could definitely react with a duck. The question is, all right, can you react quick enough to like launch him? Yeah, see, I'm trying to duck after when the two would hit me and it's a little bit more difficult to get out launcher. You probably can. Yeah, you gotta be fast. Ugh, why is that not coming out? There it is. So yeah, um, you could break it with one pistol like a Shirley. How much damage was it? 35. The Okeon doesn't look that great because he's all the way over there. He's pretty far. Uh, 26 damage or 35. There's two hits. Uh, and then you could hold back to cancel that grab. You hold back and you stay standing. They gave him this in tag two. And uh, I saw people use it early on and then I never saw it again. So... It's just an extra little layer to his mind games, but it's kind of goofy. I don't know if it's like... It's just uh, something you can have in your back pocket, but I wouldn't rely on this. This is just something you use every once in a blue moon. Alright. So that's one, three, two, one plus two back for the cancel. Uh, according to RB Norway, the cancel on block is negative 32. And on hit is negative 24. Those are big windows. That second attack to cancel was good. If you fucked up the bounce, sure, Lion Cock. Yeah, I mean, I guess it has a use in that. If you're able to react mid combo and you're like, I fucked up the bound, uh, by, you know, the, the whatever. I fucked up the bound. Let me cancel out of it and then just stay standing. I guess. <laughs> but it's like, whatever. Yeah, but 1 3 2 is. Uh, oh, yeah, you could do it off of 4 4 2. You're talking about 4 4 2. Okay. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, none of that matters anymore. 1 3 2 is still a wall combo in case you missed it. It's still used even by JDCR and shit. So anyway, next on the list is his two jab. His two jab is also 10 frames. Zero on block plus nine on hits. Zero on block plus nine on hit. And then it's his uh, two one. It's his other jab punish plus six. I showed it earlier, 18 damage. Uh, unfortunately, since it's uh, on the two, if you want to hold forward with it, you cannot, not with the two. You can do that with the one three to, add, to make it a lead jab into the three. But the two, you cannot. You gotta just press two one wherever you're standing. If you hold forward, you're gonna get forward two. For those of you who don't know what I mean by lead jab, in second, when you hold forward and you press a jab, as long as you don't have forward plus one as a unique move, you add range to your jab without making it slower. So you can hold forward with your jab. You should pretty much make it a habit of always holding forward with your jab if your character is able to lead jab. Always make that a habit. That's my recommendation. <clears throat> and that, it's a key thing to punishing moves in some very specific situations. Like, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but trust me, it's, it's in... Like, 
the well it's not this is not the case anymore but eddie's down forward two elbow used to be like negative 10 on the dot in the earlier games and most characters had trouble reaching him especially if he spaced it but even if he didn't space it they had trouble and you had to like if you had a lead jab sometimes you had to do that So yeah, that's 2-1. Now 2-1 has two extensions. What's up, Guns Blaze? You've probably seen these before. 2-1-3, which I think is still useful as a juggle 2. And 2-1-4, which is a fucking gimmick and a half, right? It's not useless, but... Because you could delay 2-1-4 quite a bit, as you can see. Now the fact that you could delay it so much makes it good to me, personally. But most people are just going to see them. They're just going to do it. They're just going to do it. So keep... Uh, Keep an eye on this. If you start to see an opponent, especially in the lower ranks, playing this character, even in the mid ranks, yellow, orange, doesn't matter. If you see 2 1, consider ducking. Because it's going to be a high, a low, or. which has a big gap. So ducking and stand. Of course, ducking and standing does not beat delayed 2 1 4. But like I said, most people don't think that far ahead. Personally, I would just do a lot of 2 1. Oops. That's the thing I hate about two uh, uh, sidestepping with two, because uh, he has two as a move. Sidestep two, sorry, as a move, as you can see. So it's hard. You can't really sidestep into two. But anyway, especially we're doing a couple of two ones here. Right. Two one four is plus three on hits. Same thing on counter hit. Fourteen damage. That's a pretty good chunk of damage for that low. What's up, Dynamic? Uh, yeah, you, you were here, man. Uh, 2 one, 3 is just a nice-ass chunk of damage that is safe on block if people, like, try to sidestep or swing after the 2-1. What is it? Uh, 24 damage. See? There's that uh, ass knockdown again. That one, they could definitely back roll. Back quick roll. Bam! And then you gotta hold back. You gotta hold back, because if you don't hold back, I get a free hit if I'm dragging off. Right? I don't know what the hit would be, but he'll get something. He'll get something up there. Oh, he's kind of far away, but maybe if it was a situation where it was like stand guard and then stand, right? Oh, man. Oh, man. Why are you not? It takes some forever to let go of the guard. Whatever. I'm not going to go too crazy about it now, but he can, get, he can get something for sure. Maybe not from max range, though. Another use for this... Uh, this might have been toned down for this, but... Um, yeah, you see how far away it knocks? It's not a bad wall carry. In some very specific situations, Dragonom is one of those characters uh, that you could go kind of free. You could freely flow with his combo. You don't just stick to one combo. When you get used to playing this character, you could easily adapt your combo mid combo for how for how close the wall is, which also makes him, in my opinion, a little more execution heavy. Maybe execution heavy is not the word. But it makes him a little more advanced than you may think. There's a lot of situations where it's like, hey, instead of doing like uh, a forward three can, you know, a forward three cancel into jab, right? I might just do jab, jab, and then two one three because my spacing at the wall might make that more useful than doing forward three into whatever. You might even be able to fit in more damage because of that. Those, it's just another one of those you can think about in those considerations. And even in a neutral situation, like I said. It's a nice way to add a, like, a good chunk of damage to your 2-1 if people swing after your 2-1. Or sidestep after your 2-1. And 2-1 is only negative 2. Another, another good setup for counter hit 1-2-1. One, one. Negative 1, negative 2, great setups for counter hit 1-2-1 one, one, in general. So yeah, as you can see, it doesn't jail obviously, right? The, the two one gyms and no sidestepping. Uh, it is negative 14, which I never knew, but the pushback makes it safe. So this is not going to be something you're going to want to use at the wall. Let's see what uh, RB Norris says. This is two one three. This might be the tech. Oh, sorry. It's negative nine. I was looking at my side. Yeah, look at the second side because the AI is doing it. It's actually negative nine. Ignore what I said earlier. So negative nine with pushback. So the negative, you could totally move. I would not recommend sidestepping unless you back that first. And his name is John Cena. Uh, who is this? Uh... Oh shit, Gambit. Don't look at that, amigo. You 
been around the block for a while. Thanks for the sub. I gotta update my sub notification. As much as I love uh, swimming John Cena, which you guys can't see because the tech about is blocking it. <laughs> Enjoy the Marduk emo. Marduk lives. <laughs> Marduk lives in Manny Biggs' chat. He lives in my heart. Rest in peace, homie. Uh, pour one out. So yeah, uh, 213, what whatever the fuck I was saying about that move. Moving on. Negative nine with a lot of pushback. Oh yeah, I was saying with the pushback, uh, depending on your matchup, if somebody sticks out a, lo a long range limb, then sidestepping after that might get you killed, but there's nothing wrong with backdashing first. See? And you get all this space you created, and if people come in swinging with something, you know, get that uh, back four three or down four two locked and loaded. Keep it locked and loaded and uh, with punish. I don't think there's any need to test the uh, tracking on his jabs. We know how jabs track, right? Next is standing three. This is a 15 frame start of a string. 3 1 natural combo, mid high. Now, I gotta warn you guys about this string. Uh, when I started learning Dragon Off in Tekken 6 uh, uh, console, I got I, I started to kind of fall in love with this string just to <laughs> beat me to the punch he, he just showed right there what 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 was wrong with this string what I was getting to I fell in love with this string because the standing three had such long range and I was like this is just a really easy whiff punish I had a lot of trouble executing quarter circle forward two on command as a whiff punish and back four three's range is great but it's not standing three great the thing is standing three outrages the fucking follow-up hit that is a natural combo. It outranges it, as you can see clearly. I did it twice already. Um, so you have to be very careful. Especially in the case of Dragonov, uh, when you're going against Dragonov, where his arms stick out, but his midsection is pushed in, there are certain mids that tend to whiff him because of that. Like, I can show you Gigas right now. If I pick Gigas and got into point black Richard to down forward 2-1 on normal hit, the one whiffs him. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, like, you gotta be careful if you wanna use this. Like, I almost wanna say don't. Just don't use this as a neutral tool. Use this as only a combo tool. Uh, yeah, see, uh, well, whatever. I can't get it consistently. So, 3 1 is really risky, but it is, uh, plus 7 if you get it to connect, and it does have really good range. If you're really familiar with the range, it does have that. Um, it's definitely not a counter hit stream, but the second hit, maybe. Second hit, counter hit, gives him the third hit. Normal hit, it does not. So that third hit is negative 12. That third hit does do a nice chunk of damage. That's why it's a good juggle tool. The first two hits are shit damage and they fuck up your scaling. But then the last hit is like 24 damage. That's what makes it an effective uh, juggle tool. Uh, it does, it does uh, walk carry in a way that allows you to still run up and walk combo. Uh, I like it for back rolls. Wall carry after spin. Uh, it's also good at if you juggle people from the rear. It's uh, it's pretty much his best juggle ender, typically. You, sometimes you might want to do forward three cancel into into shoulder. But when you got there, when you at their back, right, you might want to do a three one and delay the two. You could delay it quite a bit. By the way, it all combos in the back. Awesome. Forty two damage. But. Typically, when you're using the juggles, you have to delay the last hit. Uh, just a little bit, typically. Like, uh, what's the noob combo I see people doing? The, uh, I don't know how to juggle with Dragon Ball combo. <laughs> uh, I can't even do it down two. Oh no, they're not doing that. I see people that are new to the game do this. See, in that juggle, you'll definitely have to delay the last hit. I don't think that's a good juggle, but I just want to use it as an example. Yeah, see, if we do it too early, uh, it'll, it'll, he'll swing it right between his legs. Oh, well, maybe not in that case, but it's character dependent, but trust me, you typically want to get into the habit of delaying it. The two will tend to whiff if you don't. Uh, and by the way, I haven't gotten a while running three yet, but if you're playing this character, for fuck's sake, learn the while standing four pickup. I'll go over it when I get there. 
But don't do the down two pickup. Don't do the dash down two pickup. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. <sighs> Alright, so that's 312. I don't think it has any tracking, but let me double check because a lot of things are different in this game. Whether it's because they made it tracking better or they made sidestepping worse, I don't know. Yeah, definitely no tracking on this thing. It is a 15 frame startup, so it has like a lot of range, but I would worry about it whiffing. <clears throat> so. Uh, oh yeah, the last of this obviously will wall splat too. Goes without saying. So next we got his standing four. And uh, the standing four by itself is like whatever, right? But it is a 12 frame startup, negative nine on block, negative one on hit, plus seven on counter hit. None of that matters. You're never going to use standing four by itself with Dragon. That is a lot of damage, though. 15, though. But whatever. 4 1. This is his actual 12 frame Punisher. High. Plus 8. He's right in your face. I already showed you guys what that meant before, right? That meant that uh, nobody is sidestepping back 4 3. Nobody is sidestepping down 4 2. Not even Lily. Uh, Lily. Uh, nobody is. Obviously, nobody is sidestepping down 2 in general. So, especially after that. Nobody is sidestepping down, uh, down four. I think down four, they can't sidestep in general also. But not only that, standard hop kicks will not be able to crush you if you use down four in this situation. If you use down four after a 4-1 connects, no hop kick will be able to crush you. Uh, Dragonov doesn't have a hop kick, but he has an up forward four, so I'll try that to show you. See? No up 4 4. You see me mashing it? You see the uh, input recording? I'll try up forward 3. I'll try just holding up forwards. No, see? See? There are certain moves that jump off the floor quicker. Like Elisa's back plus 3 plus 4. Asuka's can cans. Uh, Nina's up forward uh, something. Up forward 3 or 4. I forget which one. Uh, Alisa's 1 plus 2, her capital punishment. So, another cool little thing about that is if they were, try to, if they were to try to hop it for some reason, and that down 4 does connect on counter hit, the whole string is a combo. And unlike 1-2-1, one, one, down 4-1-3 has a uh, unique counter hit animation. You see the regular hit? Right? Look at the counter hit animation. Oh, my leg. Oh, my leg. So I'll go into more detail about that uh, when I get to the move. But I just wanted to show it because of the of the post 4-1 connecting situation. Uh, another thing that they will be unable to sidestep grabs. 4-1 into, into throws is a great follow-up. You, you might have seen Aris do this quite often, right? Uh, especially Dragunov, who has these 10-frame uh, command grabs. 4-1 into... 4 plus 2 plus 3, or 4, 1 into 4 plus 1 plus 4, right? Or 4, 4, 1 plus 2 without any, um, as long as you do it as fast as possible. By the way, if you input 4, 1 and you want to go for 4, 4, 1 plus 2, hold down the 1 and press forward, forward 2. <clears throat> So yeah, 4-1 is an amazing move, not only as a block punish, it's an amazing move in the neutral. If you sidestep something, it's a great way to like just with a really have a really quick option to punish. Like if they whiff a jab, you might not get a, like a 15 frame move, but you'll get a 12 frame move. I've talked about this before. Like trying to react with a 15 frame move, it's just to show you guys. Jab into nothing. Jab it's a jab. See, even that is hard. Look at that. Not one time. See how hard this is to do? But I was able with some practice, I was able to get at least a 12 frame in. And you can too, trust me. I, I was getting it semi-consistently the last time I was practicing it, and that was like a long time ago. Now I'm all about the side step and commit to a button and then finish the string. Because <laughs> Kazumi. Kazumi spoiled me. 
Oh. Even with a jab, it's difficult to do. Oh, look at that. I'm, like, anticipating it, and I'm fucking up. All right, we go. This is how you practice that. So you, you can do it. Trust me when I say you can totally do it with a 12-frame move. You just got to put the work in and put the practice in and get into the habit of it. What I, uh, but if you uh, if you just want to sidestep and just do it raw without confirming a whiff, that's fine too. It is a good chunk of damage and it is safe on block, but despite it being safe on block, much like how it puts you right in the opponent's face at plus eight, it puts you right in the opponent's face at negative six on block. So it's a pretty bad situation, even though it's safe. Basically, you won't be able to sidestep certain linear moves all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, so yeah, 4-1 is good. But not only is 4-1 good, he has some other follow-ups. 4-3 is a counter hit string. Only negative 12 on block. High mid. And he gets a guaranteed stomp for 19 damage on top of the 38 damage. So he's basically uh, doing, what is it, 50, like 56 or some shit, right? I don't know, my math isn't great. Whatever, 50-something damage. A lot of damage for... 4-3 into stomp a room. And I think that the fourth, either the 4-3 or the stomp breaks the floor. One of the, At some point during that, he could break the floor. I think the 4-3 breaks the floor. I, I don't know. But at some point there, he definitely breaks the floor. So that's a, that's a little scary thing about him if you happen to be in the floor break stage. That's a lot of damage for only an, uh, for a 12 frame counter hit string. That is only negative uh, 12 on block. It's no Magic 4. I mean, Magic 4s are safe and they get more damage in general. Or maybe a similar damage. But still, at least his goes high into mid. So he kind of he's kind of covered in certain situations. If they were to duck and not react in time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if the second hit connects by itself, he still gets a stomp. So 39 damage. Uh, it also used to be his bound move, but you could also floor break mid combo with it, right? Like, if you want. If you choose to do that, you can still do that. I don't think that's worth doing anymore, though. I don't think I see, ever see anyone do that shit. Um, but that used to be his bound, one of his best bound moves in tag two. Uh, next is 4-4. Four, four. Now, this is something you really, you're really only going to use in a neutral situation for the plus three on block. The way, if you're fighting against Dragonov, the way to stop this is just to jab him out of the air. You could pretty much do it on reaction if you're sharp. Uh, let me see if you can sidestep it. He does recover crouching, by the way. He's plus three, but he, he recovers crouching. Yeah, see? yeah, you can get behind him. Guaranteed, by the way. I don't know what his combo would be in this game. His combo was different and when he got that. When he got 2-1-3 in the back in older games. Oh, not there. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, it's either that or you can interrupt them. 13 frame. Let's see. 15 frame. What is that? 17? 16? 17 frame exchange. 17 frame exchange, so you got a 16 frame uninterruptible window to uh to uh, hit him out of that. If you don't, he's plus three. This also used to be one of his best tag assault fillers in tag two. Random aside, this was a very strong tag assault filler. Reason being. The first hit is 15 damage, but the second hit was a shitload. It's still a good good amount of damage. This shit was like 40 damage or something crazy in Tag 2. Uh, the second hit still causes juggles on normal hit. It takes your corkscrew away. So you have to like dash up and do whatever, right? So that's another thing. If you're slow to interrupt it, you're going to eat a juggle. Careful. I don't know what the best quote-unquote best pickup would be. Oh, there you go. 67. You could probably get more than that. That's, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> Fuck. Well, anyway. So, yeah. 4-4. Four, four. Alright. Let's test four track. Second hit has some tracking. I think that was always the case. 
So if, even if you sidewalk it. Yeah, see, even if you sidewalk it, you gotta interrupt them before the second hit. Remember, the second hit gives them a free stomp still. Such a weird thing about this character, right? Oh wow, I was trying to down floor too. Huh? Oh, that's down too. Oh, wow. You basically have to sidestep and commit. If you try to sidestep and react, that's gonna interrupt you. Oh, all of a sudden I can't do the dash forward. What? I can't do the dash forward three. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, 4-3 is a very good move. Very, very, very good move. It's one of those moves where it's like, yeah, Magic 4s are better, but on Dragonov, that's a very good move. On Dragonov specifically. If it were an actual Magic 4, dude, this fucking character would have everything, man. At the very least, if you were to exchange with the 4, it ends there. It's not like a Magic 4 where you'll still get launched. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so next on the list is 1 plus 2. This got turned into his armor move. This used to be a homing move that turned that uh, had a follow-up, had a string. And now it's just a straight-up armor move. Negative 12 on block. It does wall splat. This is pretty fast, considering it's only negative 12 and it's mid-hitting. This is a pretty good armor move. There's one thing I've been noticing about armor moves, right? If they're fast, they're typically pretty damn unsafe. But if they're safe, they're typically really slow. This is in some sort of weird-ass middle ground, I'm noticing. <laughs> right? I don't know. It looks fast. What is this? 21 frames. So maybe it's, it looks faster than it really is. 21 frames is pretty slow. Let's see something. So it's one of those. All right, so it, it, it's slow. Yeah, okay. It just looks fast to me for some reason. But it is mid hitting and it is negative uh, 12. So try to punish it if you do block it. There's no counter hit properties on this thing. It just does more damage. That's 30 damage is still a lot of damage. Fuck. 25, that's still good damage. That looks like it would floor break if he hits you out of the air. It causes that sort of spike. You gotta hold back that, right? It knocks you away, but... Oh, no, you can't. That's only because you have the air, maybe? I have to get you have the air. Jab into it. Yeah, okay. So there you gotta hold back. There it is. So if it hits you out of the air, you gotta hold back. If it doesn't hit you out of the air, he gets the spike. You know what? Since you can't hold back for that, it makes you wonder if he gets something guaranteed at the, uh, if he hits you near the wall. If it hits you against the wall, it wall splats. I know that. It's worth checking out there. Alright, so next on the list is... Oh yeah, no tracking on that, but let's double check. Oops. Bah, bah, right? Yeah, that's a big whiff. Oh, I tried to fucking delayed hop kick. Oop, I tried to delay hop kick. All right, you gotta do a deep side step. I still get cute punched regularly. <clears throat> Next is three plus four. Now this move is kind of nasty. So the thing about this move, it's a high low crush that starts juggles on normal hit and it's safe on block if you tech. You have to tech. Similar to Giant Swing, you have to tech off the floor. You have to time it, so it's kind of it's semi straight. You can kind of mash it, but you gotta hold the mash until right when he hits on the floor, and then mash it. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, to convert, you want to sidestep towards the. I'm sorry, tech towards the background. So player one side is punches, I believe. Right, and then you do a wall standing floor. Right. And so whatever. Uh, in the two-piece side, is it still towards the screen? Uh, towards the background? No, the two-piece side, you gotta tech with kicks. 
and then the angle could get weird. So basically, it's just like a pretty damn high damage jungle star jungle starting low crush that is safe on block. But it is a high. So if you crush a low, it has to be a low like this, where the opponent recovers damage. Not down two. This is gonna whiff. Although on whiff, you could still uh, tech. Just know that in, in a tech situation, you basically give up uh, Oki. It's, it's that the opponent could treat it. If your opponent is sharp, if you're fighting against Dragonoff, you gotta treat the situation basically when you block it as if they tech. As your typical tech Oki, in that you gotta go kinda like meaty time. You could do that in tech for, for techs. Because techs are invincible when it. They're in the process of them getting up, they're invincible. But you could still stick a button out with the right time to interrupt, like, armor, interrupt sidestep, interrupt, basically, low parry. You gotta, if you go low, they would have to low block instead of low parry. They obviously won't be able to low crush. You could do that kind of thing in Tekken if you, ha if you have good timing. The thing is, since Oki is, like, freeform and timing is freeform, you can't plan it out like you can in a 2D fighter. <laughs> you can't just go, I'm gonna train my fucking meaties. Not, not quite like that. What's up, Chaotic Magikarp? <clears throat> but yeah, that's how you gotta treat that situation. Uh, Alright. So next. According to RB Norway, they treat this on block. It's attacking as negative 24 with guard. That guardable negative 24. That's the way they're treating this. Even though you're, you know, even though you're invincible while you're getting up. Like, I'll send that can't tech. I'm trying to tech. There it is. That's the way they're treating the disadvantage, I guess. Next is... Forward 2. I don't think that has any tracking. Let me test it. Right. Yeah, no tracking on that shit. By the way, Dragonov has some pretty cool move names. Did I miss anything? So far we went through I his one one is called Eye Gouge. <laughs> it's a hilt. Salvo, Hammer and Sickle, his one three two. One two scud kick. <laughs> one two mind kick. Disconnector, three one two. Karnov hook, four one. That's a 12 frame punisher. Karnov kick, the counter hit string. Karnov avalanche, four four. Bloodhound strike, iron flail. So next we're gonna go through stun gun and then high salute to sleep. <laughs> I love this guy's move list, dude. Look at these names. We didn't even get to Slay Ride. Fucking Slay Ride. S-L-A-Y. Slay Ride. <laughs> that fucking wordplay. Russian sickle, I think is down forward too. <laughs> oh, this guy, what is it? March of Tyranny? That's March of Tyranny right there. Alright, so stun gun. Ah, good old forward 2 4. So here's a little tip about this forward 2 4. A lot of the times where you're doing running 2, right, especially from like close range, you're gonna get a forward 2 by accident. So my recommendation is if you get a forward 2, well, not even if, whatever you input running 2, input a 4 just in case. Because then what ends up happening is if the opponent were to duck for some reason, like, like let's say you were setting up a running 2 by dashing up and doing a down 2. So if they're like, oh, he's dashing, let me duck, and then you run up and you get forward to, they're going to duck. So just to keep you covered, just input the four. Reason being, it's safe on block. Negative seven, but safe on block, and it has counter hit properties. Uh, the knee, it's a counter hit jungle starter. Uh, it's, a, it's a back one, two, or whatever, right? Uh, forward two, four by itself is a counter hit string. 19 frames, uh, 43 damage. That's really good. Uh, hey, do you know where I can get the newest Tekken bot? This is uh, this is not the uh, this is what I did with this Tekken bot is I updated a text file. If you look at the GitHub where you usually download a Tekken bot, the comment section, it'll tell you how to. Um, there's a certain text file you have to uh, I and I file in the Tekken bot folders. You have to open up with Notepad and replace the text, and they give you that information on the GitHub page. So look 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 through the comments. It'll tell you. That's what I did. This is not like a new version of Tekken bot. So forward to forward, just a really high damage, high mid counter hit string. And it's also used in certain jungles, like close to forward two mainly. It's a forward two four. This, it's a forward three, 
used to be super hard. They made it way easier. And I don't even think this was possible before, but now that they made forward one plus two a uh, corkscrew, you got both of those options. You also have this, of course. So it's also a juggle tool. <clears throat> forward two four. Uh, let's see how the tracking is. Oh yeah, forward two by itself is uh, plus three on hit, negative eight on block. Oh my god, look at that. It's one of those that moves him forward and it's super linear, so you're gonna get his rear. Ooh. Camera tricks. Camera tricks really fuck up rear punishing, you know? When he gets to somebody's rear when they're moving forward, the camera sometimes will swoop around, sometimes it won't. It'll just like keep you in place. So you have to input like forward as left or right, you won't be able to tell basically. It's pretty annoying. That's unique to this game. I mean, that this was a it, it was a thing in past Tekken games, but in this game it happens way more fucking often than it used to. I think Tekken Tag One they had there were specific setups where you could manipulate the camera to fuck with people's guard. That was like a thing that people used to do in Tekken Tag One. I wasn't really into Tag One like that, though, so I wouldn't be able to tell you the specifics. Uh, anyway, so that's forward two four, no tracking. Just keep that in mind. If you every time you input a while running two, especially from up close. Just input a four, just in case. Just trust me on that one. That's a thing that, like, really high-level players have been known to do. I don't know about lately, but in older games, that was a thing. Uh, so next, we got forward three, the step kick. What is it called? What is it called again? High salute. <laughs> step in Bardiche, step in Mantis. All right, so we got the high salute. The high salute is the forward three, and then sneak. This is the good old forward three cross dash cancel. Forward three, down forward. Forward three, down forward. Forward three, down forward. So how do you do the forward three into the jab? Well, after you do this forward three, down forward, you gotta tap up. And then right after you tap up, and uh, right after you let go of the stick, after tapping up, press one. You do not press up plus one. That's what happens when you press up plus one. You gotta press, basically press up and then one right after, like tilde style. Have you ever seen the tilde in Tekken notations? Consider it that way. That's why it's up tilde one. Forward three, down forward, up tilde one. And just practice in a neutral situation like this. If you fuck up, you'll get the closer to forward one, like that, see? But yeah, the, the tapping down forward uh, gives you Dragonov's roll dash, which is just like closer to forward. And you'll get the same move. Course looking forward one, course looking forward two, sleigh ride, four, right? You'll get all that shit out of this. You'll get all of it, right? <clears throat> so, according to RB Norway, forward three, down forward, if you go right into one of these moves, it's actually negative one on block, plus seven on hit. I would not recommend making a habit of doing this on block into a move. Do not do that. Trust me. You'll regret it when you fight good players. Uh, forward three by itself. Negative six on block, plus two on hit. Same thing on counter hit. So, we have outside of the cancel, we have two extensions. Forward three, two, which is a natural combo. And it got in this game, it got they gave it a knockdown. It did not do that before. And in this game, it is also a corkscrew, like I showed before, right? We know this, ba ba ba, right? And it's a nice long range one too. And it's also a decent wall carry post, like um, uh, post this. You can totally use that as a wall carry too. I do it sometimes, at least. Uh, it's I've seen good players do that too, so that's a that's a thing. Then we have forward three three. This is a counter hit hit throw, negative twelve on block mid mid. 47 damage, that's good. Uh, does that happen if they duck? Oh. No, it don't. Okay. So it's just a negative 12 option to cover your cover you if they duck the forward 3-1. Uh, sorry, forward 3-2. Like I said, is a natural combo. Forward 3-2 is also safe on block, I believe. 
Yeah. Negative nine. Negative nine. Negative nine with pushback. Ah, a little bit pushback. What's going on, Mizu? High salute equals boot to the face. Yep, yep. Saw that already. High salute, it's a sneak. High salute, it's a sneak. And then we got step in Bardashay's forward 3 2 and step in Mantis' is forward 3 2. So yeah. Uh, this is negative uh, 12. You recover standing, so you gotta punish him with your 12 frame standing. And he recovers pretty much right in your face, so. Um. You might be able to use this as a floor break, too. Yeah, that would probably break the floor. That could also be used if you want, like, a spike for some reason for Oki. Uh, if you're wondering what the JDCR thing he uses for the uh, extra down four in the end, Aris was talking about this recently. It's not forward three, three. He's doing forward three, cancel, it's a down forward three. <laughs> and it's like, good luck getting that. That shit ain't easy. And if you do that mid combo. Then you can get a down four guaranteed. It's like the old Jin combo in Tekken 5 and DR. Well, really DR. It was like he ended it with 1-3-3 three, three, uh, to slam him down in a similar way. And then he got a free down four. That was like an old uh, regular Jin, not double Jin thing. So Dragon Ball could do that too. And the thing about when you do those sorts of combos that spike him on the floor and get a free hit, that free hit will reset the scaling. So this is going to do like 80% damage. Or 60, 70. Yeah, hard combos, but, you know, you don't have to do it. It's just a way to get a little bit of extra damage. Dragonov's damage is fine. Dragonov's bread and butter 15 frame juggle. Have you seen the damage? What is it, mid-60s? 60. Okay, so not mid-60s, 60. And that's not even the best damage. That's the one that you typically see that gives him Oki. It gives him the 50-50. 50-50 Oki. Dash up into down two or while running two. After that juggle. So, uh, you know, you don't have to do the hard shit. <laughs> Although some may say forward three into four one is a little weird, but I explained this earlier. This is forward three, down forward, and then you tap up to cancel. Tap up and then let go. And right after, right after you let go of up, literally right after, you input something. Whether it's a one, whether it's doing this into one. Whoops, see, I fucked up already. This is one of those things that's kind of easy to fuck up, but it's not hard to do. It's easy to fuck up and drop. But you can definitely get the hang of this. You can do this in, in online pretty easily. And typically, you only need to do this with one rep. It's very rare you need to do this more than, like, one rep. And even then, you might get two reps at maps. At maps. At max. Maps. You, you don't need to be doing this, like, three times in a row like I'm doing here. This is just a practice if you want to do it over and over again. Or four times in a row, right? Oh, fuck up. Oh, fuck up again. Oh shit, Kyle thing. And even then, I mean, it's not going to connect, but you can still do four. Uh, could you help me with an easy combo I tried like three days ago? With Dragon Off? What, what's the combo? I don't know how to end it. Well... While you will type out whatever the juggle is. Oh, this song is so sick. I'm gonna just hide his body just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, you giving me a video, dude. Hold on a second. Course, I go forward one. Ba, 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 jab. Uh, uh. Well, you're doing too many hits. All right, you're, are you trying to, hold on a second. You're doing, uh, ba, 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 jab, forward three. Uh, uh, uh. You're doing. By the way, an uh, easy way to end it? You said easy. Oh, that was a reset. Running two. Oh, what's an easy way to end it? You said easy. I don't see the point of that juggle, though.
Like, why do that when you could just... damage. Why are you trying to do all this fancy shit? It's not like you need more wall carry. One thing, I don't know if you know this, if you, uh, if you want to dash into forward three, there's a new trick in this game, right? Because the whole thing, like, if you're trying to dash into forward three, you're going to get forward forward three, right? And if you hold down the four button, hold down the four button, and then tap forward, forward three as forward, forward, forward three while holding down the four button. You're gonna get forward three. Of course, if you still input forward, forward three, you're gonna get forward, forward three. What's going on is for some reason holding down the four button removes the buffer window for forward, forward three. Because usually you can input forward, forward three. Like, you can input forward, forward, and then hold down the second forward for a lot of time, and then tap three. See? It's like, you see how much I can dash, and still get forward, forward, three? But if I'm holding four and press three, a forward three times, you're gonna get forward three. If you buffer three... Wait. Oh, I guess that works too. I didn't even know. Huh. I guess uh, maybe maybe buffering the three makes it easier. Interesting. I thought you had to buffer it with four. Oh shit, KO two thousand credits music. Sick. All right. So anyway, that's another thing about forward three. In case you didn't know, that's how you do the uh, multiple hits, uh, corkscrew, and then dash up into forward three. Okay. Next, we got forward four. Now then, for, uh, by the way, forward three, I didn't talk about the startup speed. It's actually 20 frames. So it's not like a Punisher, really. I mean, I guess it can be a Punisher if you punish something that's really bad on block but pushes out like crazy. You can totally uh, try a forward three, too. That might reach. Maybe. All right, so next we got forward four, which is 14 frames. Forward four, four is a 14 frame punish with some distance. This is important to know. So this is negative. This shoulder, for example, is negative 15, right? And it pushes back. And Dragon kind of like doesn't move forward very much, see? Even though it's negative 15. See, I talked about the range of these moves before. See? But if you're up close, if you're up close, you can get it if you're fast enough. Oh, wow, no. He can't punish his own shoulder. That shoulder used to be negative 14, if you can believe it. Now it's negative 15. So. Ooh, not even. Look at that. Ooh, that's fucked up. He can't punish his own shoulder. There it is. He has to be right in your fucking face, though. He can't do down forward 2. It's too slow. He's too far. He's blocking the 16th frame of the down forward 2. Crazy, right? And that forward's with him. As long as you as you close, forward four four. Uh, otherwise you have to set up for a down forward four. Because four one isn't gonna reach. See? Man, that shoulder is fucked up. <laughs> forward one plus two is too slow. It's negative fifteen. Four one plus two is too slow. Yeah, back three will probably work too, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, back three will be work too. Um But back basically Forward 4-4 four, four has a little more range than down forward 2 and back forward 3. Uh, but does more damage than back 3. Back 3 is another 14 frame move. 
but this is 14 frames and nets you 30 damage instead of 17 damage. That's why that's why it's important to notice. Um, and it's really more like massive dependent stuff. Like the, sh like the shoulder exam I'm showing you, even that is not consistent. So I'd say just punish with a down forward four or a back three, like as was brought up. Um, it's also worth knowing that four or four four is a high. So if the opponent recovers crouching after pushing you back, that might not be an option. But uh, another example... No, I was going to say maybe Double Jin's uh, Rage Drive, but maybe not. Maybe you want to go mid for that. Uh, that's a really weird put. You could, you can punish that with a high, but it's a little weird. Um, and down back 2-1 is 12. It's 14 frames also. But down back 2-1 won't reach. Won't reach the shoulder. <clears throat> so the other thing about forward 4-4 uh, four, four is it has the 4-4-4-3 four, 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 extension, which really should only be exclusively used for juggles. I wouldn't use this in a neutral situation. You could delay the second hit, which uh, tells me that maybe. Oh, I didn't know that. I did not know that. The second hit launches? Can you get anything? I mean, how often do you see this happen? Thanks for the follow, me. So I, I guess if you commit to the last hit, you can continue your juggle as normal. If you continue with the third hit. Oh, so maybe there's something to this. I, ne I, I, I don't think I've... Have you guys ever seen a Dragon Ball player do this? Yeah, Dragon Ball's punishes are one of his weak points. It's pretty average, but not only... Uh, Damage-wise, it's pretty average. I think 4-1 is a really good 12-frame punish, but damage-wise, his punishes are pretty average, right? But then it, he has the range issue top of that uh no none of you guys have ever seen this right i've never seen this like used during a match and you could fish for it i mean i guess it's like unnecessary he has better shit and it is risky if people are like smart to it yeah i'm trying to see if you can confirm you can't input the last hit as a confirm you have to you have to commit you have to basically hit the three right after you press the four. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I, definitely, definitely in juggles. We know that. I'm saying, has anybody ever seen this used to fish for that counter hit on a second hit? Because you could delay the second hit. I, it, it's just, I, I want to say it's probably not worth doing. It's too risky against good players. But it's there if you want to do that. Sixty-two damage. Okay, up to thousand one. Uh, that's weird. Let's see how it tracks. I must well do the whole screen. Oh, tracks to his right side. Good to know. I mean, his right side is his strong side in general, though. Alright, who's the first to his jail? Nope, they don't. For about the key thing, what's the name? Cougar combination. Cougar combination, alright. First hit is negative 7. Negative 11 with pushback. Negative five. Nothing on the last hit. As far as counter hit property. Huh. Alright. Tracks to his right side. And then we got the gimmicky forward four down four. Once again, plus three on hit low. Seven to the two one four. Less damage, even though it looks way more painful. Because he's doing the John Jones oblique kick, right? He's trying to kick your shin out. Which hyper extends your knee if you're moving forward. That's why John Jones does that. Uh, it sounds way more damaging too when he connects, but it does less damage. Whatever. Balance. Uh, nothing special on counter hit. Still plus three. But uh, this one forces crouch. I think this one does too. Yeah, they both force crouch. Plus three forces your opponent to crouch. 
on hit. On block. Uh, it's not a natural combo. Negative 12. Countering combo. I did that real slow. John Bones Jones. Man, cat, stop snorting. So the second it doesn't follow you at all, really. And it's hard to test the other way because it'll track. I like to test that because, like, for example, the second hit of that always track well. Back 4-3. Alright, so next we have... Uh... Next we have Skeber. This is his long-range punishing uh, launcher. 17 frames. 17 frames! Alright, so this is uh, an important tool. If you are a Dragonall player, you have to familiarize yourself with when you're going to use this, right? Uh, you can kind of use this as a decent whiff punisher, but it is a high. Keep that in mind. Because it's pretty fast at 17 frames. It's not a slow move. But a lot of like things that people whiff with tend to recover ducking. Or at least kind of duck for a moment. So this shit could be whiff city, depending on what they whiff. Uh, but still, um, it's there, and in some instances, it is a block punish. For example, not Heihachi, but Kuma's forward forward two. Heihachi's is only negative 16, not 17. Kuma's forward forward two is negative 19. If you block Kuma's forward forward two right in his fucking dumb face, this, I believe, reaches, I think. Uh, Aris already showed off the Demolition Man shit. You have to sidestep block the last one to make it work. Um, this punishes Paul's death fist, though, if he's close. Once again, if he's close. There's a lot of if they're close situations going on with the pushback. Where this move will reach. Laws while standing two is another example. You can block punish laws while standing two with this shit. You gotta launch laws while standing two. You gotta fucking punish that shit. Otherwise, you give him a free launcher mix up on the slide. With the slide mix up. A free mid hitting launcher. So, uh, it does course screw on the first hit, so you gotta run in and uh, do whatever, right? Uh, you won't get a second course screw. You gotta be ready to dash when it connects. So you gotta confirm. And it's, it's relatively low damage. This used to do more damage because you could get a bound after it. Now you can't. You have to, you used to be able to do this. <laughs> and now you can. You have to just do a mini juggle and, and take the uh, shitty damage. So this one was actually kind of nerfed in that aspect. Also, but in juggles, as I showed before, it is also a core screw. Juggles. It's a low damage core screw, but it's there. Alright, so that's that. It doesn't have any tracking, I'm sure, but well, why not keep going down here? But we're going to test it anyway. Oh yeah, it's an elbow also, so fucking Asuka reversal, she eats the fucking bow. Cannot do a generic counter on it. Oh, why is he doing a cross slash? That's weird. Oh, get the rear. Oh, what the fuck? It kind of catches step. Kind of. You have to like walk. So if you're trying to step this for some reason, go right, I guess. I guess it's because of the way he's swinging it. All right. Now we got down forward one. Yes. Down forward one. What is this move called? Switchblade Ripper. So, I don't know what down for one by itself would be called. It's just called this. Should we just call it the Switchblade? <laughs> down forward one four is Switchblade Ripper. Uh, down forward one four is a mid high counter hit stream. Believe it or not, in Tekken 6, this used to give him a free March of Tyranny down three four, which would floor break. <laughs> uh, but in Tekken 6, you had to floor, you had to hit the floor a couple of times to floor break. It wasn't on the first, uh, the first spike. Uh, like it became after Tekken 6. Now, uh, but in Tag 2, and now they make it knock away now. 
Before it would it would do this. Uh, sorry, it would do this. It would do that on counter, and then you would combo into that. You will not be able to, because of the angle. You will not be able to get a down four one three though, like you do with up one four. So um, anyway, yeah, it's just a knock away, safe on block, mid high counter hit string, thirteen frames. So you can duck it, of course. If people abuse this too much, you can totally duck that shit. Uh, but down forward one by itself is quite obnoxious. Now, I don't know if it's this is because of the uh, chain, the weaker movement in this game, or if they buff the tracking. But there are times where this shit will just fucking clip you. You cannot step this shit. There are times where you cannot step it. And there are times when you can. It's weird. In at least one direction. For example, left. If I go left, it's whipping. Oh, no, not there, though. Right. But why? This is also a negative two situation. Why is it tracking? It has something to do with how, the distance that the first one pushes you back. Something to do with that. It's really weird. Can't explain these things. See? 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 Oh, he did it there. Weird. He didn't step it the first time. It's just, there's something up with this fucking move. There's something weird about this move where it clips you when it shouldn't. And now all of a sudden I can't make it work again. It worked clearly the first time. Oh. I'm, I'm like, is it my timing? I'm mashing it. I, I'm starting to wonder if there's some sort of glitch with this move. Did you see the GIF on Reddit of drag tracking 180 degrees with a while running too? No, but that doesn't surprise me. That kind of shit happens, man. Have you ever seen King's running exploder hit behind him? King's running exploder, the running, jumping, drilling drop kick, has a hitbox that goes like behind his head and shit. And it always had that hitbox. Uh, there are times where people think something tracks. But it's because somebody sticks a limb out at a weird angle and puts their hurt box in front of the move. That's a thing that happens. I think once you hit him once while he's sidestepping, he's kind of off axis, right? Maybe. But I was resetting. What's that? I, I know what you're getting at because if you're if you start off axis and then you move. Uh, you can avoid certain moves that usually track. That was a thing with Marduk's old down four. Like Steve was able to do it if he did a sidestep into a into a sway, he would get around certain moves that usually tracked because of that, like a double sidestep, because he's like doubling his off axisness, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. I mean, you know, I don't have a good explanation as to why this is. Like, I'll just keep doing it. Uh, see, I'm not realigning myself. But now I'm going to realign myself. I'm walking forward. Okay. So I think you're right. When he successfully sides when he's off axis. But he was off axis before too. So it has something to do with the combination of him being off axis. And the range between us. If I'm like right in his face. It's. Point being. It's so fucking janky that you cannot reliably. Like count on sidestepping this move. Sometimes. Sometimes you just can't reliably do it. Thankfully, he doesn't have, like, uh, Kazumi or Heihachi-style Twin Pistons attachment to it. Because if this shit were natural combo, you'd just be getting randomly clicked, clipped by that shit all fucking day. <laughs> it would be very obnoxious. But yeah, I think you're right. It does seem to have something to do with the access, even though I'm dashing and now it's whiffing again. So I'm dashing to realign. And this isn't Dragon of Exclusive. I tried this with other characters. I think Lily would probably be able to cleanly sidestep it no matter what. But Dragon of Sidestepping is, like, not bad. 
despite his goofy ass auto sidestepping stance that he's doing. See, he steps to the side during his stance, and then he steps back left. <laughs> Drags the spun around 180 degrees. Well, I can't say I feel bad for Lily, famous pet owner. That's a good name. All right. So yeah, good tip, famous pet owner. It does seem to be, if I were to try to explain it, it does seem to be that he's off axis. Uh, but my only explanation on top of that would be it might have to do with the spacing while he's off axis. Second just gets weird like that sometimes. And it's like I said, I don't know, it's between the last game and this one, I don't know if it's just a situation where the movement is weaker. Because it is, it's weaker than it was in Tag 2. Uh, or if it's just better hitboxes. Or if it's a combination of both. So Thought Forward 1 is an obnoxious mid poke. Uh, 13 frames, negative 2 on block, right? So it is risky to do two back-to-back down forward twos because you'll exchange for 15 frames. A lot of characters have 15 frame counter hit tools or just straight up 15 frame launchers that'll launch you in exchange for a poke so they'll still get their juggle. Thanks for the follow, uh, Sail. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sail? I'll just say Sail. Thanks for the follow, Sail. Um, down forward one is good. It's a good mid poke and it pushes out on hit. It, it is plus seven, but it pushes out on hit. So not that people should be swinging, but just in case they do, you set up whiff punishes quite nicely on top of frame traps. And also, you'll set up shit like that to be hard to sidestep. Or that, even. What I will say is, be careful with back-to-back -back down forward ones. In general. Because it kind of pushes out a bit back uh, uh, on block two. So... Backdash, which is a thing that a lot of people do. They do it without even thinking because everybody's just like, I don't know what's happening during this poke pressure. I'm going to move backwards. So you set yourself up to be whiff punished if you do this too much. Following up, you know, down for one on block in general. People could backdash out of stuff. Maybe not down two. Yeah, probably not down two. You know they buffed the range on this move? In 7.0, they nerfed it. And then they buffed it in this game. Which is an insane thing. But I think if you block just the tip of down forward one, you could escape it, I think. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I feel like I feel like though when I when I back that should get hit, that's like the very tip range of down two. Yeah. But if you keep swinging with mids and highs, you're gonna push them out. Oh man, that's like, yeah, like usual, with punishing a jab on a reaction, not an easy thing to do. You basically have to backdash and commit if you want big damage. So yeah, just be, just be mindful. If you're the Dragon Ball player, be mindful. If you're the one fighting against the Dragon Ball player, be mindful. If you see a lot of uh, Dragon Ball players following up after a down forward one, remember that. Remember that, hey, man, he said this push back on block. I can backdash. And get away from most of his shit. Hell, maybe backdash duck. Because if you backdash duck, and if you were to swing with the mid right after, what can he hit you with? Let's see. Can he hit you with anything crazy? Oh, maybe. Yeah, that just barely reaches. Yeah, so maybe don't backdash duck. But at the very least, if you backdash... Oh, here's an interesting little sort of OS. So remember how I said you have to, uh, something to consider here. Remember how I said, oh wow, I got it to what there. So there is, a, if you block just the tip, you can make that work. <coughs> remember how I said if you wanted to punish, let's say, a jab, you would have to commit when you backdash? If you backdash and then input, let's say, a down forward two, and he were to do something like a down forward two. If you input the, if you input it as back dash down forward two, you'll be blocking his down forward two, and your down forward two will not come out. But if he were to, if he were to do like a down forward one into a jab, it'll come out. This is why it's good to play two D games and learn those two D, you know, those two D shenanigans. 
This is a bit. Oop, I did it backwards. This is a very 2D style way of thinking here. Yeah, okay. It might not work for this situation because the down forward two is just a little bit too fast. If it were just a little slower, I think it would work. But the timing is not there for you. It's not in your favor. Alright. It will certainly hit it if he commits to a 1 1. All of a sudden, I'm not sidestepping the. I'm back dashing the first jab. Huh, interrupts. Alright, so I, no good for this, but I'll come back to that if I, you know, as a theory for other situations. I'll come back to that for sure. Um, so he's not in that bad a situation. You could, it is still, it is still basically a free backdash if you're blocking this. It's free to backdash. It's always free to backdash. You will not get hit by mids or highs when you backdash. You'll still get hit by this low, but you will not get hit by mids or highs when you backdash. Uh, yeah, so that's down forward one. Let me test one more thing here. I wanted to see if you could escape that if you were if you had enough time to do a two back dash to escape that. But you don't. Know. Look, the range on that down two is crazy. I can't believe they buffed the range like that. I feel like even in tag two, that sh this situation would whip. But in this game, that shit just clips you all fucking day. Oh man, you have to block the very tip to make it happen. Can he do a low parry in case he does a down forward one on block and then down two? Will also recover a time to block another. No, you cannot because down forward one is too fast and down two is too slow. If you wanted an OS low parry, you'd have to stand block X amount of frames and then low parry because down two is 18 frames. Down forward one is 13 frames. So it's the other way around. For example, uh, I have to use the jab because the, the down forward one tracking is so fucking weird, right? So we know that, yeah, see, right? Then we got, so I'm gonna go low, because it tracks, right? It tracks, right? But what if you just do, oh, I'm not putting it right. Oh, let me just block it. You can totally, you can totally low parry this too. You catch my drift? The OS has to work to uh, beat out the quicker option and then you have to adjust for the slower option. Adjust after the fact. If this were a situation where the low was the slower option that tracks, then this would be very difficult to do. I mean it's already kinda hard to do to get to get to get both situations punished. It's already pretty damn hard. I'm basically if I wanted it punish the down forward one, I have to input instant while standing one. So Taking advantage of that sort of OS is not easy for me, at least. This is something you gotta put some work into, but it's there. That looks hella hard to see. Well, the low? The low is not seeable. It's 18 frames. You can't react to 18 frames. Not in second. You may be able to, to in a 2D in a 2D game, where all these pokes and shit are like 3 frames, 4 frames, and then heavies are like 7 frames. 
18 frame sticks out a lot more. In Tekken, where it's a lot of 10 frame moves, jabs, uh, not even a lot of there's 10 frame jabs, and then there's a lot of like 13, 12, 14, 15 frame mids and shit like that that are poking at you. All of a sudden, an 18 frame move doesn't stand out as much. Catch my drift? What's up, video games? Remember the King Crotch Grab where he headbutts the opponent in the crotch and floor breaks? Yeah, I know that. It's pretty fucked up too, right? Because that throw already does a lot of damage. I didn't go through King's throws yet. That's it. That's that's down the pipeline. I, I've moved on. Oh yeah, for those of you that don't know already, if you scroll down, you'll see my YouTube. What I'm doing now, I've done for most of the cast to this point. <clears throat> It, there's, there's a common misconception for a lot of people that are playing Tekken right now or even that people that have been playing Tekken in Tag 2 and shit. There's like a misconception that lows are supposed to be seeable. That's not true. A seeable low is this. That is supposed to be seeable. This is not a mix-up tool. This is not a mix-up tool. Snake edges are not mix-up tools. Dragon Arms fucking sweep is not a mix-up tool. Feng Sai Step 4 is because it's fast enough to be a mix-up tool. In most cases. And he has like a built-in mid from sidestep. It's a mix-up. Feng's down back four, on the other hand, is seeable. That's not a mix-up tool. It's a mix-up tool if you can't see it, though. So basically, if you if you suck, it's a mix-up tool. You suck like I do. It's a mix-up tool. You have to, like, train seeing it. By recording the AI to do a couple of mids and make this the only low that they do. And then just block it on reaction. And then punish it. You gotta do that shit. You gotta do the put in the work. Trust me, it's seeable. This is not seeable. I don't care how like sidekick really good players look when they seem to be blocking this. It's a read. Trust me. It's a read. It's either a read or they're doing OS movements that have little twitch ducking in them that will catch lows. And then they react to the fact that they blocked it, and then BAM, they'll launch your ass. Because that you can react to, much like how you could react to a, a whiff off of a sidestep, and then commit to a string, like a back four three. I could sidestep back four by itself, and then if I sidestep a back four and I notice that you swung and whiffed, I could input the three, and all of a sudden that's hicker from In a neutral situation, that's not hicker from so same concept, if I'm moving around and there's little twitch, little flash ducks, right? And then I notice, oh, there's a down two. He did like a low. I'll probably be able to react to the fact that I blocked it during my movement and at least get a wall standing four, if I'm sharp. You can do that. But you can't go, oh, and then we're moving around. Oh, he's doing a down two. Block. You cannot do that. You cannot do that with hell sweep either. That's why hell sweeps are good. For Hayhachis. I struggle with all of them. Nelly Bop. Nelly Bop or Nelly Boy? Nelly Boy. I struggle with all of them. You, you just gotta put the work in, man. You gotta put in the work until you see them. And I haven't put in that work. I put in this sort of work, but like sitting here and doing drills and shit, I haven't done that since DR. Which is why I suck when I play online. <laughs> but I do my homework at least. So I can tell you that much. So anyway. That's down 414. Next, we got Russian Sickle, right? Oh no, Scimitar. Russian Sickle is the sweep, I think. Scimitar, this is his 15 frame block punishing launcher. It is also up close with Punisher, of course. Uh, and I already talked about how this has uh, limited range sometimes. You might whiff certain things, like the shoulder on block. But still, this uh, it does launch Crouchers, but it is unsafe. Some 15 frame down forward twos that are launchers do not launch Crouchers. But they are safe on block, except Leo's, which has more range than usual. Uh, Dragon off launches Crouches on normal hit, but it's negative 12 on block. So, negative 11? Off axis? Wow, I got the negative 11 by accident. It has uh, two active frames, so you can make this negative 11. You can't plan on it, but it's possible. Well, whatever. This is just straight up just a 15 frame launcher and not much else to say about it. it doesn't track, right?
Apparently it does. I did not know that. I don't know if I don't know if this is new or if it was always like this and I just don't remember. So it tracks to his right side. Once again, his right is his strong side. That's always been the case. That's not new. Oh, check it out. Oh, man. It's a little finicky. A little finicky. I put myself in negative two. All of a sudden, I hit him. But I put myself at plus one. Perfect timing for him to just sneak around it. Personally, I would never bank on going in that direction. If you think that move is coming, go. In general, Dragonov's left is his weak side. We've already seen multiple instances of why it is his weak side. Now we have a launcher to add to the list. So yeah, there's that. Uh, and of course the juggle, I've already shown it many times, forward, 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 three, back, forward, three, right? Forward, 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 three, back, forward, three, you do the trick for this, cross, dash, cancel, four, one. That's your typical bread and butter dragon off juggle. Typical. Uh, will this character get me milfs is the question. If you get good with them. Milfs love dragon off. You know who's a Dragonov fanatic? Cornestra. Now, she does some pretty good artwork. She was, uh, she had a table. She wasn't as strong style, but I heard she had a table where a friend of hers was selling some of her stuff. And she does commissions. Now, if you happen to be a furry, I'm, I believe she does commissions for that stuff too. Hey, I won't judge. But she does do commissions of just straight up, like, good looking cartoony artwork of, like, Tekken characters. She does a lot of Tekken stuff. Uh, and she does good work, and she's cool, so hit her up. Anyway, next we got Don Forward 3. What's the name of this move? Mantis Heal. So this move is a hit throw. If you're far away, it's just a poke. If you're up close, clean hit, basically. It's a hit throw, a normal hit. Basically, the same move as this, except safe on block. Right, Forward 3-3. Three, three. And Forward 3-3 three, three needs a counter hit. Don Forward 3 does not. Does not. It needs this needs to up close it. Basically a clean hit. It doesn't say a clean hit, but consider it a clean hit if you want the uh, hit throw. Uh, if you connect it from far away, it's actually unsafe. It says here. Ooh, negative twelve. It says. Wait, plus six? No. Wait, am I reading the wrong thing here? I'm reading the wrong thing. Okay, I was reading the wrong thing. I'm sorry. It's negative six. If you connect from range, it uh, from distance where it's not the hit throw, the, it ranges from plus five to plus eight for his crouch. On normal hit, on counter hit, you could get this to plus 13. It doesn't say G, for his crouch. Let's get plus 12 here. <laughs> I got the plus 13 there. That's a link. 2D style link. We got one right here. So, on counter hit, if you manage to catch the late frames of this, basically, this is kind of like a DC. You could use this like a meaty on Oki. You totally could do that shit. Which is interesting, right? There's uh, a lot of that. There's four active frames on this thing. Four active frames. You could see it on the Tekken bot. The ACT tab. Next to the 17, 17 frame startup. Uh, Hydrus, what does it mean when Dragonov is near the highest on the tier list? I am new to Tekken and just wanted to know why he is that high up. Does that mean that he's stronger than other characters? Uh, well, I explained this when I started, right? So, um, Dragonov is considered high tier in this. He's only, He's been high tier for a while. I, he was pretty high tier in Tag 2. He was like top 10. And Tekken 6, I think he was high mid. He's high tier in this game because the meta if, uh, of this game, if you will. You know how people talk about the meta. The thing that people like, the way that people at a high level play revolves ar around a lot of like simple but effective options. You don't have to think about what you're going to do because what you're going to do, it's clear as fucking day. Right? Clear as day. Dragonov is super straightforward. 
That does not mean he's easy to use. He's uh, He has some execution requirements. But Dragunov has arguably the best low poke in the game. You've seen it. If you've seen any tournaments, anybody that plays this fucking character, you've seen this fucking move, right? What's so good about this move? He ducks highs. It's only negative 13 on block, so most of the cast cannot launch him for it on block. It's fairly quick at 18 frames. It tracks in both directions. You cannot sidestep this low. It has really good range. Really fucking good, really deceptively good range. Look at this range. This range is fucking nuts. Now, I will say that Dragon All Stance keeps his legs kind of spread apart. So he actually is more susceptible to lows. That is like a real thing in this game. When you look at the stance, it's not because uh, Tekken doesn't use hit boxes. It uses like hit bubbles, kind of like 3D. Not like Mortal Kombat, but there are bubbles that stick out further than they seem. But it is hit bubbles. Um, and then they buffed it. So on counter hit, they didn't just buff the range. On counter hit, you see how he's holding his foot like, fuck, my foot. Before, it was only plus five on counter hit. And it did have a different unique animation, so you can tell. But now, you get this shit where they're holding their foot, and you're plus fucking 13 on counter hit. Huge frame of value. You don't get anything, you don't get any free follow-ups, guaranteed follow-ups, but you get a free mix-up, basically, on counter hit. And on normal hit, it's only zero. Uh, fairly often in this game, like, uh, high crushing lows like this, they tend to be negative. Like, negative one, negative two, negative three. This shit is zero. I think Brian's is zero also, and maybe Elisa's. But that's a rare thing. And it does above average damage on top of all that other. It does fucking everything you ever want in the low poke. Everything you want in a low poke, it does all of that shit. All of that shit. And then you combine that with the uh, Grim. Thanks for the host, Grim. You combine that with the infamous while running too, right? And then basically you have a two move 50-50 mix up because this, tra this tracks so well. And this is very difficult to sidestep. Where you can't really do like an OS movement. You kind of can, but you kind of can't. This is one of the best pressure moves in the game. Plus five on block. Good frame of is on block. He's right in your face. And then if he counter hits you, he does a shitload of damage, right? So, what's up, Scraggler? So, just those two moves alone. Very, very, very powerful. And then he just has basic options that are really good on top of that. Back four, three. He has really good wall options. Really good, like, uh, a really good counter hit tool in 4-3. In and 1-2-1 one, one is a pretty decent counter hit tool. I ain't even get to down back 2-1 yet. <laughs> I ain't even get to this string yet. This is a really good string. He has a lot of really strong tools. Back 3 is a great homing move. Even though it doesn't have any counter hit properties. He's great at the wall. He's really good at the wall. This move, when I go over this move, you'll see how fucked up. In putting this in somebody's face at the wall... You see how he's like spaced out? This shit pushes him back at the wall. <laughs> this is fucked up. Negative 13? No, the negative 7. This is glitching. Maybe that's why they made a negative 13. I don't know if it was like that before. There are certain spacings where this shit will push him back too. He has a lot of strong tools. A lot of strong tools. Very straightforward, but he's not an easy character to use. So don't look at the tier list and say, I'm going to use Dragon Ball, I'm going to fuck everyone up. No. You'll fuck up a lot of people with this at a low level. Just doing this and sidestepping all day and then every once in a while throwing that in there, you'll fuck up a lot of... You'll, you'll make it to orange ranks with that strat. Trust me, I've seen it. I've seen some uh, really mediocre players just fuck people up doing this all day with, some, with a couple of random all running twos. The better you get at the game, the better you get at like learning the matchups and shit, the more effective these tools become. They're good at all levels. Though. So yeah, back to where I was. And where I was, was Mantis heal. So yeah, this shit has four active frames. We just learned that on counter hit, if you get uh, the plus 12, he gets a, you can get a free down forward four. That combos like a link to these things. That's 11, we need 12. Get it one more time. No, that's 11 again. Uh, plus six, what was that? Come on. I'm gonna get it one more time. Plus 11. Damn it, I got it earlier. 
promise, I did. There it is, combo. Legit link combo, that's guaranteed. I mean, you can't, uh, you're not gonna be able to account for it, but that's an interesting little thing. Either way, up close, get the hit throw. No real Oki off of that, because they're too far. Uh, standing guard, let's see, it was a uh, negative six on block. And plus five on regular hits, a plus eight. You can count on plus five. Just treat it like plus five. Force crouch. If you get it back here. Or if they're ducking. Is that how it works? Yeah. So if they're ducking, you lose the hit throw aspect. Oh. Check this out. Consistent plus 12 if you catch them ducking. <laughs> Consistent plus 12 if you catch them ducking. That's what that's about. <laughs> so you get a free down forward four. It's not a big deal, but it's cool. Also, that is the JDCR really hard to do juggle that the Aris was doing recently. Like, what is it? You could do the forward three cancel into that move and then get a free down four. Yeah, oh, this is down four. Yeah, see, you can do um, only down four, not down four four, but you can tack on down four for nine damage no matter how long your juggle was. If you're down to like 30% damage scaling, it will do nine damage 80%. That's what makes that good. So, like, if you did like a full juggle, I don't know. Let's try it. Whoop. Basically, that's guaranteed, but you don't want to do the four four because then you lose Oki. <laughs> this is I'm double tapping. I'm matching the down four four. You want to do the time perfectly timed down four. That's what you want. So yeah, it's not it's not too hard, but it is pretty. Difficult. It, it's uh it's easier than it looks, but it's not super easy either. So anyway, yeah. So that's down forward three. Next we got down forward four, which is called. Oh no. It's, Oh, so this is uh, diverting from the uh, from the RB Norway data here. Well, anyway, we got down 4-4, four, four, which doesn't appear to have a name on the move list. Uh, this is a rare thing. 12-frame mid-poke. Typically, people's fastest mid-pokes are 13 frames. After you trash talk on Gigas a few days ago, you inspired me to pick him up and got to Arch rank in like four hours. Yeah? I trash talk on Gigas, but who knows how to fight that character? Gigas was my first Arch rank in this game. <laughs> he was my first orange rank, and you know what I fucking did? Nobody knows how to break throws online. I fucking made people block while running twos, got them to the wall, and it's like, here I come, toss them into the air, and just show them for like 75 damage. Nobody fucking knows how to block throws, on how to break throws online. And then after you get the command grab, you charge a back two, bam, and the moment they get up, that shit interrupts almost everything. They gotta block that shit and hold it. You guess it's trash, dude. He's trash. But people just don't know how to fucking fight him. That's what I, that's that's kind of why I went on that rant in the first place. People don't know how to fight because that's the thing about low tier and Tekken, right? You see like shit like Aris. Why is Aris struggle so much against Ali? Ali's a pretty good player, but it's mainly because he's using fucking bears. Nobody uses those fucking characters. <laughs> so it's like this giant black hole where everybody knows and generally agrees that these characters suck. But then it's like, well, yeah, they suck. But do you know? Do you know, right? If you don't know, then it doesn't matter how good the character is. How do I get good at breaking throws? Video games, I mean, I talked about this last time. Now that I'm doing Dragon Off, I can just show you real quick. You, uh, use three recording slots here, right? When you pick a recording slot, pick Move List instead of Record. Go uh, pick Dragon Off. Don't only do this with Dragon Off, but you see these two throws? Uh, Oh, sorry, these three throws? Put these three throws on these three slots. So what's going on here is... And make them the same frequency. So what's going on here is... These two throws, first of all, they're faster. I forget how much faster. Uh, okay, they're one frame faster than regular throws. 11 frames. So they're actually more difficult to break than your regular uh, regular throws. Uh, also, they are legitimate one and two break throws because they are uh, command grabs. This is a one plus two break. 
Uh, in the start, I recommend setting this to normal instead of short, like I have it now. So set it to normal. Uh, and then you uh, play it out, right? Uh, the cool thing about Dragunov is if he successfully gets his two throw on you, he switches sides. So you want to practice on both sides, not just two, not just one piece side, but two piece side also. Another thing I recommend is at the start, space yourself back here. Don't just try to break those up front. Look at the hands. What is he doing? Press the button that he does after the fact. One plus two. One plus two. Don't worry about pressing it early enough to break. Just get used to, get into the habit of pressing, waiting to see, and then pressing the correct button. One. Two. One. One plus two. And then, when you get in your fucking face, break the throw. That was one plus two. That was, oh, that's two. One plus two. Two. One plus two. One. One, two, one, two, two. Oh, I, I meant to press two, but my finger missed and hit the corner of the button. Ow. <laughs> you see? We switch sides now. So now, oh, no, we switch sides again. <laughs> but still, you want to do it on both sides. Look at the leading hand. One break. One break. One plus two. Two break. One break. One plus two. I pressed it wrong. One plus two. One, one, and then eventually you'll get good enough where you just kind of zone out like I am right now, and I'm yapping with you, and I'm barely paying attention to what I'm doing, and I'm still breaking them semi-frequently right now, right? You could totally start to put on the fucking video on the side, listen to a podcast, and just zone out, and just break throws for a while, and when you start doing that for a while, what that means is, this is muscle memory, and when it's muscle memory, it means you don't even have to think, you just react. You just react. See, I was too slow there. You just react. And you know what's crazy? This is just carryover from my throw break practicing in DR. I have not done, I've done very little throw break uh, practicing ever since tech in DR. Where, where it was harder. What they did here is, it's not easier just because, oh, you could, bre you could break generic throws with one or two. That's not what makes throw break easier. That is what makes it easier if you're new to the game. What truly makes it easier is the window is wider to break throws now. That's what helps me. Because my throw breaking used to be trash. And then Tekken Revolution came out and they widened the throw break window like crazy. And then this one, they pretty much carried over that widened throw break window for Tekken 7 and they added the generic throw breaks. But you don't want to get used to generic throw breaks being either punch. You want to look at the hand. That's what you want to get used to. Except for King, but, you know, that's a whole different matter. King is unique because of Giant Swing. Uh, oh, one, one plus two. One, plus six. What do you mean one plus six after one plus two? One plus two? Plus six? Am I missing something? I don't mean see myself doing it in a real match, but it gives me hope. You just gotta get used to it. What's unique about King's throws? Um, man, I, I, all right, since I talked about this, I'll show you guys this right now. So you don't only want to practice this against Dragon Off. You want to practice this against other characters, especially the weirdly shaped ones like Gigas and Kuma. Uh, Gigas does not have a command grab outside of one plus two break. I still recommend looking at the hands though. It's just because he's oddly shaped that it becomes weird. Like, this was a big thing with Ogre. Uh, true Ogre in the fucking tag, too. He had the waning moon grab, which did a shitload of damage. And his arms are so fucking huge that it was really weird to break throws. It's not just Giant Scream all the pollution, but that's one of them. So for those of you that don't know, just in case, you know, I don't want to assume that everybody knows these things, so that's why I just show it. So King has it. If you've seen King players, you might have seen this throw, right? The Giant Swing. So remember what I told you about the throw break rules, or in case I didn't mention it, look at the leading hand. 
that you know, I'm just I'm inputting generic throws, but still, leading hand indicates throw break 99% of the time. So he's leading with his left hand one, left punch one. You press one to break this, right? Here he's leading with his uh, right hand. That's two, right punch. You break this with two. And then uh, here, you see how both hands are reaching out evenly. You press, you break that with one plus two. Both punches. Except for this throw. Giant swing. That breaks the rule. You have to break that with one. So basically, King could 50 50 you on throw breaks by either doing a real one plus two break or giant swing. You might notice that because of the input for giant swing, it's forward, half circle forward one. Uh, he might, you know, you might notice, oh, in like a neutral situation, he kind of like does a little move around thing and that kind of gives it away. Yeah, but no, the really good king players, they're going to do stuff to mask it. Like, for example, uh, not that. Um, they're going to like buffer it out of stuff, like a crowd jab, right? That's a popular one. A crowd jab, it's a giant swing. How can he tell? You don't see the weird glitchy movement. All right, I'm putting it wrong. See? You don't see the weird glitching movement. How can you tell the difference? He moves forward a little bit, I guess, but you're not going to be able to react to that, really. The key thing about Giant Swing is you could kind of, if you're sharp, you could wait to see the startup animation of him grabbing at your legs and then break it. But that is very difficult to do. The best way to go about it is look at where King's standing. There's no walls here. That doesn't mean he's not going to do giant swing. If there were walls, if the wall is behind King, there's a high chance that he's going to go for giant swing. Except when he's pressed up against the wall. If he's pressed up against the wall, then he's going to go for this. Which looks like giant swing. But if he's like, if the wall's to his back and he's like one back dash away or one forward dash away from the wall, then there's a high chance you're gonna see a giant swing. Cause what happens is, when King Giant swings you, look at the damage. Uh, well, it doesn't show the proper damage. Something. Wow, it's like, it's 50 plus 20 damage, I think, right? It's like 50 plus 20, I think, right? Something like that, or 50 plus, uh, or 40 plus 20. It's like 60 or 70 damage, something like that. But if you mash after you land, right when you land on the floor, it does less damage. All right, I didn't do it. <laughs> there it is, 45 damage. That's a lot less damage than 60, I think it is. If he throws you into the wall, you cannot do that. You cannot reduce the damage. He gets the full damage, and I think he gets more, like maybe five more damage. Uh, sure. I, I don't. I forget the result of the tackle. Uh, the thing about King is, this is not exclusive to Giant Swing. This is also the case for uh, what is it? Uh, crouch dash. Uh, uh, there it is. You see this little cross dash into the into the into the grab. You see how it looks like one plus two. He has a two break and a one break there. That's not a one plus two break. That's a two break. And that starts a chain grab, by the way. That's a one break. The other one was a two break. Both of those start chain grabs. That arm breaker one starts the rolling death cradle chain, chain grab, which does like 120 damage or something crazy, like 70% of your life. So that's not exclusive to Giant Swing. Remember that. If you see the crouch dash before the throw, remember, you got to guess. <laughs> Personally, I would guess one, because that's the uh, rolling death cradle one. I would guess one break here. And I think that's also the case for, uh, doesn't he have, like, um, yeah, same thing for Jaguar Step Grab, I think. I think Jaguar Step Grab is also, I think that's a one break. Let me see. Yeah, that's a one break. That's not a one plus two break. But the thing about those is that like, he does them out of stances, a cross shafts, or a jaguar stuff. So uh, that's the giveaway that he's not doing a normal throw. In the case of Giant Swing, it could just come out in a neutral situation.
he could mix up Shining Wizard with it. And Shining Wizard is a legitimate one plus super egg, right? It's the Shining Wizard. He can do a Shining Wizard or a run up and giant swing. <laughs> Shining Wizard is a one plus two break. And we can just run up and... And the dash hides the giant swing. You know? So, yeah. King King is like the only legitimate grappler in Tekken, if you want to think about it that way. But he's not like a grappler in the sense of like how it is in Street Fighter. Where a grappler determines what... It's like a specific kind of character. It's more like KOF. He's a character that happens to have some unique grab properties. That's it. There's no grapplers in KOF. I mean, there is, but it doesn't play as big a role as it does in the Street Fighter. Tekken is a lot like that. There's a lot of characters in KOF that have command grabs. There's, there, there's characters that play like Shoto's that have command grabs in KOF. KOF music plays. That's what I mean by King. Now, I want to go back to Dragonov, although I, I will end it in about... I do, I, I do have to pee soon. So, the Korean tournament, the Aris is streaming, it's starting at 12 a.m. my time. It's currently 11.05? 11.03 my time. So, I'm going to go for another, like, 15 or 20 minutes with Dragonov, and then I'll continue it uh, next time. Either tomorrow or... So probably Sunday. Tomorrow, if I stream, I'll do some Yakuza again. And I do have to do some homework over the weekend. Sir Games. Hey, Mansfield Games, what's up, dude? Oh, you missed a lot. I'm two hours and 14 minutes in, but you know it's going up on YouTube. I kind of did this for you. <laughs> I was thinking about you when I was when I was thinking, I'm going to do Dragon Ball. Paul's Ultimate Punishment? Uh, you could just mash it out. Uh, pressure God, I'm in New York City, Manhattan. I'm literally like 10 minutes away from Chinatown Fair. I have one tip for you, uh, Isaac, Isaac Lock, Isaac, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Isaac Lock. I don't know if you know about this, but if you go into the move list, and let's, let's look for like, let's look at the uh, 10 hits. For example, right, just an example, just because it's an example of multiple buttons. If you, uh, thanks for the follow, Couturians. If you play the demo, you see how there's sound effects and it's playing each button? You see that? There's a little sound effect every time there's a button press and the button is, hi is highlighting. Namco owns the patent to this. If any other fighting game wants to do this, they have to pay Namco, by the way, in case you were wondering, a random thing. That's why this is never in any other fighting game. You can do this for Ultimate Tackle and you can learn the timing. That's about the only thing. I don't remember, I did do Paul's move list on my YouTube. And I did do Ultimate Tackle as part of that move list. I don't remember it being difficult. You sure you can't mash it out? Try mashing it out. If you can't, use this to learn the timing. Yeah, no problem. Man. Oh, by the way, another thing, in case you're wondering why Virtual Fighter uh, 4 specifically, and even after Virtual Fighter 4, but Virtual Fighter 4 Evo had the best like training mode and like tutorial. But even after that, Virtual Fighter still has like the best training mode for the most part, or one of the best. I, there, there have been some, some good ones too. Uh, Sega has the patent to, to, to the Virtual Fighter 4 Evo stuff. <laughs> Evolution. Usually people like raise that up as like the best tutorial in fighting games. Until now, I think some of the recent games, like Killer Instinct, I think, has like one of the best tutorials in any fighting game. It's just, do you give a shit about Killer Instinct? It, it, whether you do or you don't, like I recommend if you happen to have an Xbox or a Windows 10, just check out Killer Instinct's tutorial just to see what a good tutorial looks like. That shit tells you everything. It's crazy. It's really cool. But yeah, um, Sega has a patent on that Virtua Fighter shit, and Namco has the patent to the button little pressing shit. <clears throat> so anyway, now they got that lure out of the way. We were talking about the 12 frame mid. So the 12 frame mid has no inherent tracking, but a 12 frame mid is a rare thing. Most, char most characters... Their fastest mid will, from standing, will be 13 frames. Any, uh, even then, some characters don't have 13 at all. They have 14. Like Paul, for example, he has a 12 frame mid, but it's a shoulder. In regards to poking, most characters do not have poking until 13 or 14 frames. So, like I said, there are some cases where Kazumi one plus two. That's not a poke. That's like a power mid. That's unsafe on block. Paul's shoulder. That's 12 frames also. Fangs, I think, is 13. I think Fangs is slower. I don't remember. Um, 
Uh, Kazuya's one plus two. That's 12 frames also. Jin has both. Jin has one plus two, which is an unsafe power mid, knockdown mid, that uh, uh, unsafe on block. And he has forward four, which is like this, basically. It's a fast mid poke. Or is it forward three? Forward four or forward three. I forget which one. One of them is a 12 frame mid poke. Jin totally has that shit. Uh, I believe Yoshimitsu's down forward four is, third, uh, is a 12 frame mid poke. Wang used to have a 12 frame mid poke into a safe on block mid string. Rest in peace, Wang. Maybe they'll bring him back. He's a cool character. I hope they bring him back. I don't think they will, but I hope they do. Just give me Marduk first. Um, but yeah, 12 frame mid pokes are rare. Dragonov has one, and Dragonov has one with really good range, as you can see. This is a popular uh, round ending mid poke, and even then, it's still a popular move to use in a neutral situation. It's just fast. You get a nice little chunk of damage. It's only plus two, so don't press button from this range. But it does set up people to whiff, so you can totally backdash and whiff punch. So yeah, it's good. Long damage to his legs. Claudio's down 4-4 is 14 frames. Uh, quick side note about Claudio's down 4-4. It's negative 8 on block, but it pushes back. So if you're, if you're Claudio right now, for example, and you get him to block his down 4-4 from this range, from this range, basically, it sets up, like, holding back into a hop kick to whip punch for Claudio. I went through Claudio's movements, by the way, if you scroll down to the YouTube, you'll see. I talked about that. I always look for the pushback on block. Uh, Dragonov's does push back on block too, just like Claudio's. <laughs> so if you get him to block the tip, this th the fact that it's negative nine doesn't matter. Look at the spacing we're at. It's negative nine, so what? When you're negative nine at this range, what does that really mean? Sure, it may mean they can run up and do like a running two, but in general, they have to do something crazy to come at you. Just to show you an example of why that's good. So you gotta get that, but if I'm uh, if I were to stick out a button. Mm. Well typically you're gonna wanna wait for the whiff anyway, but I'm just trying to show you guys what can whiff. I should not get I should not have been to do a double back dash. That hit me, bro. Wow, I'm actually shocked at that whiff. That hit me. Now, he still is negative nine, so if I were to finish that string... Oh, we exchanged. Check that out. So the back three whiff... Uh, actually, no, the, back, the back three reaches. So Dragonov has got like the long dances. Oh no, there we go. We found the perfect range. We found the magic range. We found it. I made the back three whiff and got launched. This is kind of what I mean. You don't want to commit to a button like I'm doing with this recording. I just did this to show you guys. You could make a lot of shit whiff, even at negative nine, with that kind of pushback. To go back to Claudio's down four four, same thing. Thirteen? No, I'm pretty sure it's uh, fourteen. Claudio's down four and four. You might be thinking about the knee. Hold on, let's see what this Tekken bot says. I mean, the Tekken bot isn't always right either, but let me check. Claudio down four plus four. Oh, it's 13. You're right, sorry. Maybe it's Shaheen's that I'm thinking about, Shaheen. Yeah, Shaheen's is negative 14. Sorry, those two kind of blend together in my head sometimes. They both have long legs. They both have like the same hop kick. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Alright, yeah, so Claudio's is 13 frames. The knee is also 13 frames, oddly enough. Claudio doesn't have a standard. He has 13 frame mid pokes, but they're like negative worse. Like, they're not like negative 2 or 3, like this is. His are like negative 7 or 4 or 5. I think the knee is negative 5 or some shit, back 3. So, anyway, that's beside the point. Off subject. Back to Dragonov. So, yeah, that 4 4 is good. Even better than I thought. I never gave it enough credit because I never paid attention to the pushback until now. I'm a smarter player now. I've been around the block for a while. Not a better player, just a smarter one. I'm a terrible player. So anyway, uh, that's down forward four. Uh, 
da 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 We already tested. We know it's Lanier, unless he's like plus seven or eight in your face. Then you cannot sidestep it. <sighs> so next we got... I lost track. There we go. Next we got Don Ford plus one plus two or full cross plus one. Does this have a name? This is the Manuel Lopez. It's probably on the bottom of the move list. It is. It's called Pitfall. So this is a cool move, in my opinion. Re reason number one, he recovers way faster than you would think. That doesn't mean you can just kind of spam this in the opponent's face. But he recovers faster than you would think from this. Uh, he recovers crouching. See? Oh. He recovers crouching. That you should know. According to RB Norway, it's... Uh, 12 frames. See, it says 12 frames, but Arby Norway doesn't talk about recovery, so it's kind of weird. I don't know if that means 12 frames he recovers in 12, crouching. It might mean that. But let's see. Uh, let's record. Let's put him at plus 5, right? And have him stand block. So it is, it is a big win, a big win though. But the up forward four loses, which is 22 frames. I thought that was slower. 20 frames hits him. I don't know if I have a 21 frame move. Uh, but whatever. 22 he was able to block. So at plus five. So it's like 20, a 25, 26 frames of recovery, something like that, around there. Which is a big window, but it's shorter than you would think, is what I'm saying. Uh, also, another thing. Sometimes you want to bait people to swing something or do something from range. This kind of does that. From range. People might like treat this like, oh shit, he's running at me. They might just look for some sort of unique movement. And then it, they'll think, hey, he's coming with a running too. Let me stick out a magic four. This totally fucks with people. You'd be surprised. You'd be, just keep this in mind. Th this is not like a primary strategy. This is something you keep in the back of your head like some pocket sand shit. You know what I'm saying? This could, you, you'd be surprised at how much mileage you get out of this. If you use it at, if you use it wisely. As far as the actual purpose of this move. It's a cool unique, uh, unique low counter. Right? Now it has a different animation if it's a uh, punch or kick, I think. Also, I think it's a wider window than your typical counter. It's 33 damage for a punch. And 31 damage for a kick. I, it looks like it gets some good Oki. Uh, actually. I'm almost wondering if that down four is guaranteed. Why do it over low parry? Well, you kind of don't. <laughs> That's the primary purpose of the move, right? But low parrying is more rewarding. So you, if you can low parry, low parry. But it does look like it gives good Oki. Style points, basically. Exactly. Give me that leg. Give me that leg. <laughs> you remember that Aris video? Give me that leg, you dumb motherfucker. That's just one of those that... Uh, style points actually matters more than you would think if you were in a tournament. Here's something to think about Pressure God, right? When you get good, when you, when you, when you get good after playing for a while... And you're trying to like, when you get good is when you start to play your opponent. You gotta think more about what your opponent is doing than the character. When you get good enough at the game and knowledgeable enough at the game, you start playing the opponent behind the character, not just the character, right? You focus more about what they're doing specifically. So you wanna think about if your opponent is the type to break mentally out of like a really strong read, 
How much more strong were could he have than be like, I'm not gonna low parry, I'm gonna do this shit. I'm gonna do this shit. Just to make you look stupid, right? That fucks with the head. It's the same reason it's the same reason when people will read people who that play characters with hot kicks, when they think a low is coming, they do this. Not just because it does more damage, but like think about how much that gets in your opponent's head. It's like, go ahead, do that shit. Fucking moron, and then bam, and then you eat the fucking big damage, right? That's not even the job. I don't even know what the juggler's up is, but you get the idea. That's a 25 damage low crushing launcher. With a shitty hitbox. What about his standing parry? Does it just parry mids? It's not, uh, I don't like to call these parries. I like to call these reversals. Attack reversals. Because a parry is a different thing. A parry is like what Jin does. This is more of a attack reversal. But I feel like the, the, the language has gotten so muddy that everybody, call, including Ares, calls everything parry. So it's like, why fight against it, right? I'm just, I just sound like an old man. But I like, but because there are actual parries, I, I like to avoid calling these attack reversals parries. I just call them reversals or counters. Dragon Off is just generic. You can chicken it and it just counters punches, uh, mids, highs and mids, punch or kick. There's no difference. So it's generic, so it loses to elbows, headbutts, knees. It loses to all that shit. Like for example, right? If I do this into this. Wow. What the fuck? That shit was moving his hurt box in a weird way that he was making it whip. You see? You know what's going on there, right? I talked about this before. His stance. His arms are hurt boxes during his stance. But when they do this, all of a sudden, there's no hurt box where he's swinging. So it's whiffing. <laughs> weird, right? Second, baby. 3D. 3D. If you're coming from 2D, this, this concept must be so weird. But anyway, point being, he counters that, right? That's an elbow. No. No. Doesn't matter how I time it. I'm not gonna get countered. Oops. I think this counts as a knee. Forward four. Yeah, it counts as a knee. But if I do this, it's a four. He catches that leg and he does the same as the, as the low counter, basically. Can you use Dragonov's low reversal to interrupt Double Jin's rage drive? Uh, I suppose you can, but you could just low parry that also. Also, you wouldn't be interrupting it. Double Jin's rage drive is low mid. Also, reversals have stardom. So, things like rage drives, if there's no gap in them or strings, if there's no gap in them, you cannot reverse them. So uh, I don't know if Devil Jins has that sort of gap. I'm assuming it does not. But I've been wrong before. I'd have to test it. Uh, all right, so back to the... Uh, so we talked about this already, right? Pitfall. You can also do it for full crouch, by the way. You can totally do it for full crouch. It's another thing to get people to think that like something is coming and to hesitate, maybe even a crouch block because it looks like he's going low. You go, huh, and then you do a wild standing too. Aris does this sometimes. I don't know if he still does it, but he's definitely done it before. If you pay attention, you might see you might see the duck do this and then launch or a while standing like four or something, just to get people to react. Another another popular Aris setup is to do this. <laughs> Hold forward a little bit, bam, because doing this realigns, moving forward while crouching realigns, and then the delay drives people crazy. They're like, oh shit, press something and then bam, you just interrupt them. It's kind of gimmicky, but it is like a solid mind game. And it works. You'd be surprised at how often it works. Big risk, though. You're just holding down forward in their face, ready to get hit by mids. It's a big risk. <clears throat> so anyway, next, we got down one. Speaking of down one, be elbow. This is a pretty good move. So this forces crouch on hit and on block. On block, it's zero. So I talked earlier about one to one being a counter hit 10 frames uh, string, right? The elbow forces crouch. In general, for the most part, if people do a wall standing move from crouch, it's gonna be 11 frames fastest. Wall standing 10 frame moves, very rare. 
Dragunov does not have, uh, have a uh, wall standing 10 frame move, for example. You could crouch jab, and that is 10 frames, and everybody could do that. But if people get a little too mashy after blocking something, especially if they don't know that that force is crouch, that's a counter hit setup. If I do a wall standing four, oh, I was too slow. Not slow. See? That's a wall standing four I try to do. See my recording on the bottom right? The button. See, I'm trying to match it. You see the startup of the wall standing four. As a matter of fact, this is a perfect example of a situation where you could counter hit confirm one, two, one. You see? You could see the startup of an attack. You could totally, off of this move, counter hit confirm. Uh, the uh, what you call the one to one. Too bad you can't really drill this though. There's no way to drill. Uh, one thing I wish they would add in the training mode that a lot of 2D fighters have now is the ability to record what the what the bot does, the dummy does once they block something. Like if you think about Street Fighter V and KOF and all those games now, you could record. Oh, when you block, do this. When you get up off the floor, do this as soon as possible. You cannot do that here. If you could do that here, you'd be able to record a situation where it's like, all right, he blocked while standing four here, and he blocked do nothing here on this slot. And then you can practice this. But you can't. What is one to one off of block? It's negative 14. It's unsafe. It's very, it's unsafe and versus certain characters. It's unsafe in a really bad way. Geese with meter will launch you. Brian can launch you for that. Uh, Lars can launch you for that. A Joe Z could get a lot of damage, and if she has Rage Drive, she'll launch you for negative 14. Dragonov won't do much at negative 14. He'll do 4 1. What's this move called? We're looking at the names of these moves. Down 1, where you at? <laughs> I thought I would be moving fast throughout this movement, but I ended up like yapping a lot. <laughs> I don't mind though. You guys know I don't mind. Bunk Buster Elbow. Sick name. And then down two is called Razor. There it is, the March of Tyranny. There's <laughs> the Separator. Stiletto. That's door. <laughs> you know what's great about the names of these moves? A lot of his best moves have sick names. My favorite move name in the whole game is still March of Tyranny. Are you kidding me? The fucking March of Tyranny, dude. <laughs> Clipping Sweet, what a generic name. Clipping Heel Hug. Clipping Sweet's a fake crap. Palm Muscling. Eye Gauss to Stingray. Serrated Edge. Death March. Oh, Back 4 is called Death. Oh, Back 4 2 is called Death March. And the treatment, Back 4 2 1, is called Death March into Ear Grab. You know what that means? You know how the last hit of Back 4 2 1 is like a slap to the side of the head? He's grabbing your ear when he does that. Urgh. <laughs> That's sick. Death March to take down. War Machine is back 4 3, dude. Blizzard Hammer. Back up a Inertia Kick. That's the Sabaki that he's parrying. Sub Zero is his unblockable. Counter Strike is his up 4 2. Eye Blast. That's the eye gouge with the eye poke move. That That's a counter hit juggle starter. Under Pressure. That's the new. Uh, uh, fake ass orbital punch, but it's way too slow. Slicing Soba. Scorpion Scissors. Alright, let's stop. I can be here all fucking day reading his move names. These fucking move names are so sick. Law's Hammer of the Gods. Oh, Paul. Yeah, Hammer of the Gods. Yeah, that's and that's a great move too. Hammer of the Gods? That's a fucking really good move for Paul. Down forward 1 plus 2. Plus on block. Knocks down on counter hit. On normal hit too, right? I forget. Oh, whatever. Hammer of the Gods. Anyway, so we're talking about now uh, down one. Yeah, so down one, zero on block, plus seven force crouch on hit. So on hit, it's really good. You can do whatever the fuck you want on hit. Another thing about, another note about forcing your opponent to crouch. Now, I know this is weird online because people can set themselves to be first player, but on your screen, they'll be on two piece side because you can set yourself to be first player. So that makes this, this one I'm about to explain a little weird. If your opponent is in a force cross situation, the only way they can instantly sidestep is towards the background, which means two-piece side could only sidestep towards their right. 
One Piece side, Forest Cross, they can only instantly sidestep towards their left. But in a plus seven situation, that doesn't matter as much. In a zero on block situation, like down one, that, that could matter. But like I said, unfortunately, online, you're not able to tell. <laughs> but, you know, that helps you determine, oh, I'm going to swing with something that tracks in this way, you know? so Because I know they can only sidestep towards this way. Uh, remember, Dragon All's strong side is his right. So Dragon All making you block this when he's on the two-piece side means that, you know, his options to cover tracking are much better. So the tracking moves matters based on side. It sure does in a force cross situation. Look, if I were to block this shit, right? Just jab into down two. I can only go think about it. I'm force cross. If I'm trying to come towards the foreground, which is my right side, I tap down, right? What's happening? I'm like fucking teabagging. If I wanted to side step down, I have to cancel by like dashing and then going down. Or I have to tap up and then down. Or tap up and then cancel that and go down. That's not gonna avoid anything. I'm gonna run into a move trying to do that. But if I go up, see? I could go up, perfectly fine. So right now, this dragon I'm on the two piece side. If he's worried about me sidestepping after I block that elbow, because it's zero, he will have to either do his homing move or down two, which is basically a homing low, when you really think about it. Uh, or some sort of mid that tracks in that direction. Dragon All, we established already up to this point, has no shortage of mids that track in that direction. Dragon All's right side is his strong side. Dragon All's right side, oops, sorry, is his strong side. What else do we got? Uh, oh yeah. Those are all really good moves, and they all track in that direction. However, reverse the rolls, and all of a sudden, oh, what the fuck? Man, this move's weird. His name is John Cena! Pressure God, thanks for the sub. Thank you very much. Enjoy the Marduk emo and enjoy John Cena swimming in midair, although my Tekken bot is blocking him right now. <laughs> Apparently, in this situation, this move is tracking better than it should. <laughs> so let's try another recording. Let's try uh, this again. There you go, see? Better example. Right? This clearly worked when I was on the one piece side, but now we're on two piece side, it don't work. Thanks again for the sub, uh, Pressure God, and once again, Gambit. I appreciate it very much, you guys. Now, I, I wanna be honest with you guys, I don't always stream Tekken. So, like, I don't wanna lie to you guys. Uh, more often than not, I don't stream Tekken, actually. I've been streaming Yakuza 6 and new JRPGs. But no matter what I'm streaming, you can always ask me a Tekken question. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm going to drop what I'm playing and then load up Tekken to show you stuff. But I, if I know the answer, I will explain it thoroughly if I can. Oh, thanks for the sub. Bordega. Thank you also very much for the sub. <laughs> you guys can't see John Cena swimming in the air. <laughs> Enjoy the Marduk emotes, guys. So anyway, yeah, see, it tracks, clearly, it tracks to this side. So you guys get the idea here, right? Oh, take it easy, video games. And thanks again. I, I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate the subs. Trust me. It's a lot. It means a lot to my heart, which is in pain right now because I ate Popeyes earlier today. In my fat chest. <clears throat> All right, so we got uh, we got that out of the way. So this is a very good move. I haven't even talked about the counter hit properties of this move. Knocks down, you get a guaranteed stomp on counter hit for 19 damage. So that's 21 plus 19, so 40 damage for this move that's already really good on block. That's a really, really good on hit 
you could turn it into 40 damage on counter hit. Very good move. Oh, are you in New York? If you're in New York, uh, there's a guy that's trying to start a weekly. I have been unable to go because I'm still I'm at the tail end of my school semester and I gotta release. Really Sit down and focus. Oh shit! Combo! Nelly boy, good looking out there. Is it like is this like the thing where people say about yawns when one person does it in a room, everybody starts to do it? <laughs> well whatever it is, I appreciate it. I hope everybody catches this disease. <laughs> Thanks, Nelly Boy. Um so yeah, if you happen to be in New York City, there's a dude, I forget his name, Zihan or something? Uh, he's trying to start a local near me, actually, at Orchard Street in Manhattan, which is off of Allen Street, which, if you know Canal Street, if you used to go to Chinatown Fair, very close to that, that, that area, off of the FBD Grand Street is near that, too. Uh, the uh, NRQ stops in the area. So he's trying to start a weekly around there. Uh, yeah, I'm sure if you look it up online, you'll find it. But unfortunately, it's on Wednesdays and I'm in the middle, not in the middle, I'm in the tail end of my last college semester. So I've been unable to go so far. And he's un if he can't keep interest, the owner might stop, you know, doing it because there's no money in it. So I figure I'd shout that out. And I think that guy is trying to, do he's also doing monthly. So, and I think Spooky recently or Arturo uh, tweeted a lot of the known NYC players about doing, uh, bringing uh, Tekken back to NLBC. As bi-weekly, I think they were asking. So they're trying. We're, we're trying to get the Tekken scene going here again. They're trying. I say we're like I'm a part of it. I haven't. I've been doing a very poor job of going to these events uh, for a few reasons. But anyway, they are trying to get interest going back in it because it's been historically an issue with New York City Tekken ever since we lost chance on Fair. It's been hard to keep weeklies going for a long time because the interest just isn't there. There's money. There's travel. All that shit. So and now people got to pay venue fees. Times I figured you didn't have to pay a venue fee. I missed the good old days. But anyway, I figured I'd bring all that shit up in case anybody's in the New York City area. So back to this, right? Um, uh, who is that? Butt LaButt. <laughs> What's up, Butt LaButt? Good name. <laughs> uh, I lost track. Oh yeah, I was talking about that one. Really good move. What I don't know is if it tracks. I don't think it does, but I've been wrong about many moves that I don't think track, so... This game is weird, man. I think one of the things that makes Dragon Ball better in this game is... He seems overall much harder to sidestep. I, I feel like if I were to load up Tekken Tag 2 right now, a lot of this shit... Well, this doesn't track, but a lot of the stuff that's been hitting me... I'd have no issue sidestepping it. And once again, I don't know if they improved the tracking or if it's because they nerfed the, the sidestepping. Because they have nerfed the sidestepping. Not as bad as it was in 7.0, but it's still uh, worse than it was in Tag 2. <sighs> okay, so let's go through like one or two more moves since it's 11.34 and Aris is probably going to start the stream soon for the, the Korean uh, TWT. Next on my list here is down to, of course... The most important move, arguably, more important than Wild Running 2. I think it's more like Wild Running 2 and Down 2 complement each other so well as a combination package. Those are clearly his two most important moves. He has other really good moves, obviously, but those are the two big ones, right? So Down 2, the Razor. I talked about this move earlier. Tracks both directions. This is basically a homing low. <laughs> you can almost consider it that way. 18 frame startup. You cannot react to this. I don't care who you are. Maybe if you're fucking on some, like, beta blockers. Maybe. I don't think so. Maybe if you're the one, you can react to this. Probably not. Maybe if you can cast the world, you can react to this. Maybe. But chances are you're not going to react to this and block and, and block punish it. At least not in a neutral situation. So this tracks in both directions. Zero on hit. Now, if you're fighting against Dragunov, it's important to remember that this is zero on hit. That doesn't mean he's in a bad situation, but that does mean that you don't really have to respect this into this as much as you think you do. A lot of people freeze up when they get hit by down two. There's a lot of things you can do. First of all, you could just cross jab and interrupt that. And if you happen to be, let's say, Geese, Akuma, or Eliza, you could really make this motherfucker hurt with a crouch jab. 
right? Another thing you could do, depending on your character, you could sidestep, right? And it might be dependent on what side you're on. Sidewalk, actually. It seems like sidestep loses. Yeah, sidestep loses. But, so, you know, you can do a nice little sidewalk and cancel to a down forward two or whatever your launcher is. You know, or you could do something a little bit faster if you don't have a launcher as an option and, you you, you, you know, you want to give yourself a little more time. You can go into something a little faster. And then the same thing applies if he were to say, do down two, sidestep down two. Down two is not a super fast move. 18 frames is like not super fast. It's not seeable, but it's not fast. So if he was trying to like do down two, zero on hit and then sidestep into down two, if you just happen to be sidestepping into a button, you're gonna interrupt them. And in this case, he has trouble sidestepping his own while standing floor. I mean, maybe I was sloppy with my input. Let me get a deeper sidestep in. Yeah, I think it's because he has to sidewalk his own side, his own while standing floor. That's probably why. Oh, or not. Maybe he just has trouble going in that direction. Maybe it's because I'm on the one piece side. So let's, uh, no, I already got the recording. Let's record it again. Now let's switch sides. See? Okay. So this is a situation where Dragon on specific while standing forward seems to track pretty decently to his left side, but not to his right side. At least if you sidewalk, if you step, it'll clip you. Not all while standing forwards are created equal. Some of them have zero tracking, some of them have a little bit of tracking, some of them track very well. Dragonos has some tracking. So it's just one of those situations where you gotta when when you uh when you're practicing against this matchup, no matter what your character is, this is a key situation to test. Test like all of Dragonos options. How can I sidestep them in player one side? How can I sidestep them in the player two side, my character? What does my character get for a cross stab? If he does something slower than a while standing four, do I have some sort of really strong option that could fuck him up? Like a Kazumi might want to do while standing one instead. Maybe her while standing one tracks the one. I don't even remember off the top of my head. But if her while standing one does track, she, uh, she, she could get hit with a down two. And if he tries to sidestep into something, while standing one two. And the cool thing about Kazumi's while standing one two, for example, is that's hit confirmable. So she doesn't even need to commit unless it hits. If you're sharp. That's just one small example. So, on counter hit, on the other hand, you definitely have to respect this move because it's plus 13. Who do you got your money off of Korea uh, Masters? I don't know. I don't even know who's in it, actually. Uh, they definitely buffed down too. I remember not being able to continue juggles with it in time. Well, that's not the important buff, Mansfield Games. They buffed, uh, they buffed the float that while standing four gives. That's why you're able to juggle. In uh, Tag 2 and Tekken 6, the combo off of this was this. And only certain characters uh, would take more damage. For example, King and Armor King, he was able to jab them after the wall standing four in all the games. Now, just about everybody can get jabbed. Not only that, he recovers standing, which was a change they did, see? Now everybody gets fully juggled from his sweep. Uh, but also, they changed the sort of recover standing, which is a change that they did in Tekken Revolution. Second Revolution is to recover standing, and they kept that for this game. Before, it would recover crouching, so you would have to sidestep down too. Uh, yeah, so Nii isn't playing, right? So, I don't know who's there. If JDCR or Saint are there, my money, they're still my they're still my go-to guys. One of those two. Despite them being not as consistent, not as, I can't even talk, not as, not as, this is a tongue twister for me. Not as consistent as they used to be. <laughs> Despite that, I would still put my money on them as odds on favorites. One of them. Lately, probably Saint. Saint is starting to get consistent again. Uh, Alright. So yeah, down two is a key move. I already talked about this move a billion times today. I mean, I don't think I need to go into it further. It is negative 13 on block, so certain characters will launch you for blocking it. Josie. Kazuya. Uh... Not Eddie, because he recovers crouching. Eddie's 13 frame launcher from from crouching is a high. Eddie cannot launch it for this. 
Keep that in mind. This is also a really good move against characters like Steve, but Steve has a scarier low crush than he used to, so it's not as good. Uh, Take is in JDCR's group, and he's lost the last four sets. Okay. Yeah, JDCR lately has uh, been struggling a bit. But he's good enough that, you know, I won't count him out. Not yet, at least. Alright, let's end it with the March of Tyranny. Because it has such a fucking cool name. The March of Tyranny, down 3-4. This is a counter hit low mid. Combos on countering. But not only that, the second kick has counter hit properties. Bam! Right? Uh, nothing guaranteed, though. That knockdown used to give guaranteed stuff. In this game, uh, it's only plus, it's plus 23, but it's guardable plus 23. They're crouching, let's see. Okay, it's the same thing. It says knockdown in parentheses here, and I'm wondering. I guess this is indicating that it does the animation where they get knocked on their ass. Uh, it is plus five on hit though. Can you delay this? Yeah, you could. Uh, you cannot visually delay the string, but you could in delay your input of the second kick. You can input the second kick after the first one connects, but you can't like make it come out slower. You just have a lot of time to input it. So that means you can kind of counter hit confirm this. If you see a startup of an animation on the first kick, you can commit to the second kick. Not an easy thing to do in this game, though. It's not like Soul Calibur, where a lot of those counter hit strings have unique animations. There's no unique, as far as I can tell. Oh! I was wrong, guys. Check out normal hit. Look at normal hit. Look at counter hit. So if you want to train this, you see here, player attacks, counter hit, random. I'm not good at this, so. Yeah, um, I'm not sure about this. Yeah, maybe not. I don't want to say no for sure. It's just not enough. It doesn't feel like it's enough time to me. But I don't want to say no for sure. It's not that big a deal. Because it's not that bad on block. It's like it's unsafe, but it's not going to get you killed. It's only negative 11. Thanks for the follow, Buttermilk Waffles. Good name. Uh, so it's not going to really get you killed on block. It's only negative 11. You are in their face, so you, you can't, you know, maybe you can space this out. Yeah, maybe not. He moves forward quite a bit. What I do like is down three has a shitload of range, but it is negative four, but it has a shitload of range, and you kind of keep yourself back. You look at the spacing. So even though it's negative four, once again, you can set up whiffs. You can totally do it. Easier than you could with this. Because you only negative four instead of negative nine, so you have more time to move. So one thing you gotta be careful though is the first kick is negative 16. So if you don't commit to the follow-up, you could get launched by most of the cast. Be careful with that, and you do recover standing, so it's not one of those situations where you could duck like a high. Um, but once again, if they try to uh, if they try to uh, launch punish you, you will interrupt it with the follow-up, right? While standing four works, but the launcher does not. But let's see if uh, twelve frame. 12 frame exchange? Yeah, 12 frame exchanges, but you can interrupt it with 11. Interesting. So you can always count on at least, I ain't know, I ain't know you can interrupt this. You can always count on a uh, 11 frame punish. Yeah, definitely not slowing it down there. Another thing though is this tracks really well. Also, this low hits grounded. This low hits grounded. So one thing I like to do is when I go for setups off of throw Oki, which I'll get into when I go through throws. If I go for some sort of mid option that whiffs over their body, um, I like to do down three. 
whether it's standing or whether it's standing or crouching. It's a different low when he's crouching, but they both hit low and they both have a lot of range. Uh, hold on a second. Sorry about that. Anyway, so yeah, they both hit low and they both have a lot of range, so they tend to cut. You know, they could still interrupt you sometimes, but. If they're a little slow, this, they kind of cover your ass and still give you a little bit of damage at the end of your OK. And that's what I like about both down three and full crouch down three. They both keep you covered, and they're both pretty much the same damage. There's only one damage difference. They're both awful on hit. Well, they're both awful on block. Not that bad on hit. <clears throat> and, yeah, I guess I'll leave it there. Right? Down three, four... We went through that. We bought the second kick. Negative 11. Low mid. It tracks. And the second kick knocks people on their ass. Bam. Yeah. Okay. So I'll leave it there for today. <laughs>